Welcome to Fanfiction Audiobook. American Comics. Make up containment. I create a foundation. Chapter 66. Next month will be Christmas. At this time in previous years, Christmas is already being celebrated, but now, the residents of the Federation are going through purgatory. From the first case on November 17th to the first wave of infections on the 19th, the city was ravaged by the initial surge of cases, which paralyzed local medical institutions. The federal government's Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and other federal agencies quickly stepped in to declare a state of emergency. But the spread of the virus is beyond everyone's imagination, and it has become almost impossible to contain it. On November 21st, Federal Speaker Adam Benford ordered the Federal Army to surround and blockade New York City, and the Disaster Emergency Management Agency began to distribute emergency vaccines obtained from the United Pharmaceutical Company on a large scale. By the 22nd, however, the situation had deteriorated, with the United Global Health Organization declaring it a massive outbreak, and New York City's chaotic state upgrade security forces evacuated from out-of-control neighborhoods. The remaining police and military units were combined to form the Joint Operations Force. In order to control the situation on the 23rd, the Joint Combat Force had to build a high wall around the city center and erected barricades and fortifications on various streets. However, the urban area was blocked, and the situation became more and more unstable and tense. Even if the virus is really just a flu this time, everything seems to be controllable and gradually improving. Human beings miscalculated what they were facing. This was not influenza at all, but caused by the substrain of the abnormal containment 008 zombie virus. At first, people thought it was nothing more than a pandemic flu until the dead started coming back to life and attacking the living. The city center, where the Disaster Emergency Response Agency continued to transport and detain patients, became the most dire flashpoint, and the Joint Combat Force suffered severe attrition. On the 24th, in response to the increasingly severe crisis, Speaker Adam Benford officially signed and implemented Decree No. 51, immediately using the first batch of agents from the Strategic Homeland Bureau to intervene in various out-of-control cities. Feather-like snowflakes are falling, making the city even more gloomy. New York, Manhattan, Hell's Kitchen. Only when you lose, you will know the value of possession. In the past, the people of the Federation can stay at home comfortably in winter, blowing on the heater, burning the fireplace, enjoying the beauty of the holiday during this time, and preparing for the upcoming Christmas with their wives, children, and friends. Prepare for the festival. But now, this most prosperous city in the Federation has been turned into a purgatory in just one week, with living dead men filling every city and chasing and killing living people. Prolonged blockade, with no way out of the city, many people were reduced to thugs. It used to take only five minutes to walk downstairs to the restaurant when I was hungry, but now this five-minute journey may take an hour, and even cost my life. Water and electricity cut off food shortage, lack of medicine, and there are countless wandering zombies in the infected area, as well as rampant gang thugs. Their former protectors, the military and police who worked hard to maintain order, at the moment instead became the targets of those mobs. Even though it used to be zero dollar purchases every day, gun battles every day, known as Little Gotham, but the federal residents of New York hope so much that their former lives can come back, even if it is the terrible daily security they complained about before. At least you won't worry about going out to feed the zombies, you don't have to worry about your only supplies being robbed by mobs, and you don't have to worry about your wife and daughter suffering misfortune. Although JTF is barely maintaining, but with JTF suffering serious attrition and losing ground, this fragile city seems to be about to collapse at any time. Like Gwen, Peter, Parker at the moment, who has obtained the super ability, huddled with a group of students, parents and teachers of Midtown Technical High School in the campus blocked by wooden boards and barricades. Although the disaster was severe, Peter Parker's life was pretty good. With the Spider-Man's extraordinary ability, Peter Parker got a lot of supplies. Not only can I eat and drink without worrying about myself, but I can also guarantee the supply of materials for uncle and aunt. Since Peter's uncle is not dead yet, he hasn't told Peter the famous saying that the greater the ability, the greater the responsibility. At the moment, Peter is still in the excitement and loss of gaining power. Especially at this time, due to the disaster, Peter. 
Parker was able to live together with the goddess in his heart, Mary Jane, in the same classroom that was converted into a temporary shelter. Definitely, there are others here. Even so, Peter even wished that these days could last longer. Just when Peter Parker was still dreaming that this kind of life could last longer, Peter's best friend Ned suddenly picked up his mobile phone and shouted at Peter. Hey, Peter, watch this video, it's super cool. What video is this? It's about some kind of foundation. It seems to say that there is an agent organization of the Global Strategic Bureau that has been lurking around us. Maybe there are agents of the Global Strategic Bureau around us. Peter laughed when he heard Ned's words. This must be a lie, a lie, if there are really so many agents, the city should return to normal. How is it possible? This is a video that has been viewed more than a billion times on YouTube before. Maybe it really exists. As soon as Ned finished speaking, he suddenly saw a red-haired girl walking into the safe room of the classroom. It was Peter's dream lover, Mary. Mary asked curiously, what are you two looking at? Peter suddenly became excited, and danced and said, wow, you know what, it's a super cool video about a secret agent organization called the Global Strategic Bureau, saying that they have arranged countless agents throughout the Federation, saying maybe one of the three of us is a global agent. What agent is not agent, that's funny, Peter, I got some batteries, why don't we play with the handheld? Mary changed the topic with a smile. At this moment, there was a loud noise from the campus. Ned looked panicked. What's going on? The three of them looked out of the window and saw that the gate of Midtown High School of Science and Technology had been blasted open. After the explosion, the wreckage of several cars smashed through the gate and broke in. This is not the most troublesome. Huge amounts of noise are likely to cause zombies in the infected area a few blocks away to move this way. After several cars stopped, a group of thugs came down quickly, and they attacked the TF Joint Combat Force guarding the school. Under the muzzle and incendiary bomb attacks of the thugs, the weak Joint Combat Force retreated steadily. At this moment, Peter and Ned didn't see that an orange watch lit up on Mary's wrist, forming an orange phoenix icon. Seeing this scene, Ned was terrified. These are about to attack, Peter, should we run away? As soon as the voice fell, there were gunshots and screams from outside the corridor. At this moment, a nimble figure rushed out of the room, with a sliding shovel probing, accompanied by a burst of gunshots. Two thugs who tried to break into the floor were instantly shot dead. Peter and Ned looked at the fully armed Mary in front of them in shock simple. At the moment, she has put on a peaked cap and a high-tech translucent breathing mask, and she is wearing a tactical vest. After finishing the two enemies, Mary Jane smiled at Peter. Sorry, I have to save our city, Peter. After speaking, Mary walked to the closet in the room, and saw a backpack with an orange indicator light lying there quietly. Mary Jane put on her backpack and waved goodbye to the two of them chicly with a super dagger submachine gun. After a while, Peter. Parker was stunned for a moment and turned to Ned and said, Ned, you hide in the safe house first, and I'll go and see it too. After speaking, Peter quickly left the safe house, put on his own hood and mask, and climbed up to the roof of the school. At this moment, he saw that Mary Jane had started exchanging fire with the gang of thugs. But there are so many thugs that Mary Jane seems to be alone. Just when Peter was about to turn into a Spider-Man hero, a rocket bomb overturned a thug's car. Short Sword 04 joined the action. That was my homeroom teacher, Teacher Irene. However, at this moment, Teacher Irene was wearing a costume similar to Mary's, and was using an M14 EBR precision rifle to shoot and kill those thugs with precision one shot after another on the roof. At this time, the thugs set up a vehicle-mounted M249 class and frantically suppressed Teacher Irene on the roof with machine guns. Two smoke bombs suddenly hit the mob's machine gun vehicle. Short Sword 03 joins the action. It is Yuko, the Sakura girl who has been acting as a little transparent in the next class. She was carrying an explosion-proof shield, and rushed out with a shotgun on the shield, blocking in front of Mary, covering Mary and changing a bunker. Dagger 02 joins the action. Two quadrotor drones flew out suddenly, and the 5.56mm rifles on the drones poured firepower at the mobs to suppress them. It was Xiao Lin, an international student from Donghuang in the school. 
She was also holding a MK48 MOD machine gun and pouring firepower at those thugs, suppressing them. Backquote, short sword 01 joined the action. Mary and Yuko took advantage of the cover of firepower and rushed up immediately, CBQ at close range, and under the cover of teacher Irene and Kobayashi, the group of thugs were annihilated. In the end, the thugs in the school were all killed in just a few minutes. Peter. Parker stared blankly at those familiar people, but felt that they were extremely strange at this moment. At the moment, the same scene happened around people, at Gwen's house in Queens, George Stacy silently put on the logo with the orange indicator light on his back. Although the Red Rock Fort base was vaccinated, many people were infected and transformed. Just when the Red Rock Fort base was about to fall, Natasha Romanoff and Sky saw civilians one after another, and suddenly joined the battle with weapons they did not know where they got, and saved Redstone Fort. And they all have one symbol in common, they all carry a backpack with a flashing orange light on it. Short Sword Squad has joined the battle and is now intervening in Block 48 to stabilize the situation. The Noble Squad has joined the battle and has stepped into the 23rd block to curb the spread of the infected. The Red Umbrella Squad has joined the battle and has stepped into Block 12 to help JTF protect the people. In the school, in the apartment, and in the street, one agent after another was still alive, and the dormant ones were awakened, and then they started their mission without hesitation. Intervene in the situation, save the city, and curb the chaos. Peter. Parker watched in disbelief as one team after another of agents from all over the world risked their lives like moths to a flame to save the life they once had. No matter, Zhao Hao, is facing those vicious thugs, or the tide of corpses in the infected area, those flashing orange lights, gathered together, become more, like a bright light illuminating the city. These people may be your neighbor uncle, or your brothers and sisters, husband or wife, your best friend, but the next moment their orange watch lights up. They have become the agents of the whole territory, joining the battle without hesitation. No matter whether there is a mountain of swords or a sea of fire, they will go forward without hesitation. At this moment, Peter felt that there seemed to be a flame burning in his chest. The next moment, he took a deep breath and stood up slowly. Peter pulled out his elaborate red and blue bodysuit from his backpack and changed into it. Seeing those agents who risked their lives to join the battle, Peter. Parker took a deep leap. Whether it's Spider-Man, or Punisher in Hell's Kitchen, or Hawkeye in the apartment. When these superheroes saw the agents of the whole territory come forward, they made their own choices one after another. At this time, one after another V-44X vertical takeoff and landing transport helicopters with the logo of the Foundation flew from the air to the Redstone Fort base. In the cabin, there are countless soldiers of the Foundation Mobile Task Force, armed with live ammunition and ready to go. At this moment, all federal citizens who can still access the internet, watch videos, watch live TV, or listen to the radio all of a sudden see a handsome black-haired man in a black military uniform appear in their cameras forward. Hi, fellow citizens of the Federation. Let me introduce myself. I am the current Commander-in-Chief of the Foundation and the Director of the Global Strategy Bureau, Chen Feng. This is a global live broadcast speech, whether it is FCN, CNN, BCN, BBC, or every video website controlled by federal capital media. Chen Feng, wearing the uniform of a Foundation General Officer, appears in both. Chen Feng pressed down the brim of his hat, looked directly at the camera, with a confident expression on his face. Hello, fellow citizens of the Federation. Let me introduce myself. I am the current Commander-in-Chief of the Foundation and the Director of the Global Strategy Bureau, Chen Feng. In the past week, the Federation has suffered terrible disasters, and the federal system we are proud of is fragile. Chen Feng lightly took out a strong card and said, Before the Black Friday incident, it was still a symbol of power and wealth, but now it is on the verge of collapse and will soon become a waste. And the culprit that caused all this is just a containment called Anomaly 008. From ancient times to the present, every time a large number of contained objects appear, they have caused countless terrible disasters. The powerful technological civilization that human beings are proud of is as fragile as a blank sheet of paper in front of those unreasonable and terrifying abnormal containments. However, a group of brave people organized together, determined to contain all anomalies. 
in the canteen of the Red Rock Fort military base, which was closed by various roadblocks, Sky and the Widow, as well as countless surviving National Guard soldiers, as well as the public, watched the TV screen intently. In a Hummer military vehicle, Gwen, Alawesser, and Catherine sat in the vehicle and looked at a mobile phone screen together intently. Inside Shield, Nick, Fury turned on the TV and listened to Chen Feng's speech on the screen. In the helicopter, Phil Coulson listens to the radio with May's agent. In the ward of the Foundation's Paradise Island headquarters, Pepper was feeding Tony a bento, and the live broadcast was playing on the screen. As soon as Chen Feng finished speaking, a video appeared on the screen. The short video clip was edited from real images of the two containment operations led by Chen Feng. What emerges in the picture are the Afghan villages destroyed by 939, the unmarked rotting human skulls, and the pictures of 939 sub-individuals attacking humans. On 377 YouTube, Facebook, Bluebird, and The Line, countless global audiences who watched the switching scene exclaimed. Gift crab, what kind of monsters are these? Are they real? Is that real? Oh. My god. These monsters easily slaughtered the entire village. Human beings are like lambs to be slaughtered in front of them. When I saw this, I saw countless shocking comments, but there were also some skeptical ones. A third netizen questioned, is this the real world? It can't be fake, right? Soon the netizens of the White Eagle Federation downstairs were furious. Crazy, Ah San upstairs is really ignorant, how could it be fake? This is a program broadcast live by the four major media outlets FCN, CNN, BCN, and BBC at the same time. It is the foundation of our great White Eagle Federation that is silently enduring all this and protecting all mankind. At this time, a Dongwang comment appeared, what did I see? Chen Feng is from Dongwang, right? He doesn't look Asian at all. The leader of your White Eagle Federation is a Dongwang. You read that right upstairs, the foundation is forcing you. Dongwang people in front, don't talk nonsense, Chen Feng is obviously from our cold country. Disgusting stick man, who recognizes his ancestors in everything he sees, unlike our people in the country of cherry blossoms who also recognize Dongwang's status, shameless stick. At this moment, the scene of 939 annihilating Atala's armed forces for the first time appeared on the screen. And text appeared, and a brief text popularization was carried out on the abnormal containment 939,000 throated beast. That 939,000 throated beast is too terrifying. It is a real thing, and it can easily wipe out an entire terrorist armed force in Atala. Is the foundation fighting these monsters? On those incomparably real pictures, MTF Mobile Task Force members began to appear on the armbands with UCP printed on them. Black screen, white text, silent camera, we have been silently guarding. As soon as the screen turned, there were countless Mobile Task Force members fighting desperately against the contained objects. What appeared on the screen was Chen Feng in the lair of 939, leading the task force of the Beast of the Flesh and Blood Ma. In the camera, one after another task force members fought desperately, one after another, but no one flinched. Under the tragic battle, the flesh and blood mobile task force members finally contained the mother body of 939 after suffering great casualties. When the containment was successful, there were mobile task force members killed one after another on the battlefield. This scene made everyone watching on the entire Terra Blue Star into a great shock. It turns out that the world we live in is not safe, and it turns out that human beings have always faced the terrible threat of contained objects. It turns out that there is such a group of people who are silently guarding us. The following screen is the action screen of abnormal containment 096 Shy Man. The terrible disaster caused by 096 and the tragic death of countless ordinary people, especially the federal people, quickly reminded them of the previous large-scale disappearance cases. There were different opinions at the time, but they were suppressed by the Federation in the end. At this time, they finally got the right number. Seeing this kind of picture that is closely related to themselves, the people of the Federation thought of the recent series of terrible disasters, and immediately felt the same. In the same short film, there is a short science popularization about the shy people in Containment 096. The screen changed, and there was a large-scale scene of S.H.I.E.L.D. and the military using all kinds of heavy equipment to attack the abnormal containment 096 the shy person. 
It was countless times more real than popcorn movies, and beyond the threshold of ordinary people's imagination, the White Eagle Federation military's terrifying firepower projected enough to destroy a small city couldn't stop 096 from advancing. Even when the mushroom cloud rose, the comment area fell into a momentary stagnation and blank state. Countless comments such as OMG, RIP, oh my god, it's terrible, nuclear bombs have been used or flying. Then the screen changed, and the screen of Mobile Task Force Hammerfall containing 095 was displayed. Are they crazy? Face such monsters with flesh and blood. The hearts of countless people became tense, watching those fearless and fearless task force members face the terrifying containment comparable to gods with flesh and blood. Countless people are praying, hoping that the foundation can contain it successfully. When 096 was covered with a hood but still began to attack those task force members indiscriminately, the atmosphere in the live broadcast room, even if there were at least dozens of people watching, fell into a terrifying state of silence. In the picture, Heavy Hammer, the operation captain of the task force, is wearing a special eyepiece and seeing the 096 photo full of mosaics. At this time, the action captain Zhang Hammer, who knew that his life was not long, began to desperately destroy the photos with a pen. When he saw that the action captain had destroyed 96's photo with a heavy hammer, he took off his mask and showed a relieved expression, but 096 appeared behind him. For a time, countless people all over the world were crying for this heroic task force. Just a few pixels, a random Ajax photo of a scenic spot, can trigger a terrible tragedy in which tens of thousands of people die. The picture becomes black and white, and the Japanese characters appear in the lens. We walk in the darkness, so that the world lives in the light. We control, we contain, we protect, until death. I swear, I will become the shield that protects mankind, and defend the glory of mankind with flesh and blood. I will be the last line of defense for mankind, and die generously. In the comment area, Natasha Romanoff wrote this comment on it emotionally. Like a deceit and tribute. Then Tony Stark copy-pasted this comment as himself. Like a tribute to Decedent. Plus one. Then came Sky, Ophelia and her Lieutenant Leah, Gwen and Aloesser, Phil Coulson, May Agent. Soon this comment was maxed out, and even Nick. Director Nick Fury in S.H.I.E.L.D. couldn't help but followed suit and liked it. Like a Decedent tribute. At this moment, all humans living on the Blue Star Terra have understood the terrible threat of the contained objects, and even caused a certain degree of panic. But because of the existence of the Foundation, this panic was suppressed very well. The camera returned to the live broadcast room again, and Chen Feng appeared in front of the screen. The contained objects have always been threatening human civilization, and the Foundation has always maintained a policy of covert operations, doing everything possible to erase the traces of the Foundation's existence. In every operation, we will clear the memory of the relevant people, so as not to cause unnecessary panic. However, the threat of the containment is becoming more and more serious. For example, what is brewing this crisis is the substrain mutant virus of the abnormal containment 008 zombie virus, which has created a terrible large-scale infection and turned patients into zombies. After careful discussion, the Foundation believes that hiding is meaningless, and human beings must have a deep understanding of the threats we face. For this reason, we have activated the defense mechanism that has been deployed for decades against the anomalous containment object 008. The Global Strategy Bureau and tens of thousands of agents across the territory will save the Federation from its destruction. On behalf of the Foundation, I announce that within seven days, we will complete the containment of the abnormal containment 008 zombie virus. I believe that what greets mankind is not the end, but a future full of courage and endless possibilities. I believe that the hymn of mankind is the hymn of courage, and human beings will never succumb to the threat of contained objects. In this regard, I hope that after the Foundation successfully contains the abnormal containment object 008, the Foundation can have a conversation with the United Nations meeting to discuss the issue of handling the containment object. As we speak, the Global Strategy Bureau has been restarted, and the heroic agents of the whole territory will restore the extremely bad situation. We will face the mob, we will face the zombies, we will face the monsters, but we will not back down. After the live broadcast ended, there were countless people discussing excitedly. It's just that not everyone is excited or excited, for example Pierce is very dissatisfied. 
He hastily pushed open the door of Nick, Fury's office. Then Pierce said to Nick, Fury with an angry face, Director Nick, those of the Foundation, they are playing tricks, they exposed federal secrets, they exposed the darkness to the light. This is serious threat to federal security, doesn't he know how much panic this will cause? And what is the purpose of this live broadcast? If this continues, the Foundation will be difficult to check and balance. We must fight back. Nick, Director. Nick. Fury glanced at Pierce with some dissatisfaction, and retorted lightly, Pierce, don't say anything that is harmful to unity. The Foundation and S.H.I.E.L.D. are comrades in the trenches now, and we are all facing huge amounts of threats. Don't say anything that is not conducive to unity at this time. And don't do anything that is not conducive to unity. It's pointless to talk about that now, this crisis can't be concealed originally, and many things have reached the point where they have to be made public. Instead of announcing it after the end and being complained by the public, Commander Chen Feng chooses the best time to announce it now, so as to avoid our passiveness. Now is not the time to fight for power, but the issue of survival crisis. If the crisis of the abnormal containment 008 zombie virus is not dealt with, the Federation will not know what to do. Can it exist? Quote, if the Federation is over, the strength and influence of S.H.I.E.L.D. will be greatly reduced. Pierce, don't you even know this? By Nick. Pierce, who Fury scolded, was still angry, but he still took a few deep breaths, then bowed his head respectfully, as if admitting his mistake. Sorry Nick, Director, I'm being too narrow, but the problem I mentioned is still possible. After all, if the Foundation has the support of the people, even if they get the terrible ability to influence the Federation, and even the whole world. If the influence of the major human nations. We will talk about the future, we must distinguish between the primary and the secondary. Pierce. Watching Pierce leave, Nick. Fury sighed, he finally chose to trust the Foundation. Ding, the respected commander announced the existence of the Foundation and its containment to the whole world, which aroused the great attention of human civilization and gained 1 million rumor points. Obtained 10 extra special capsules. When Chen Feng saw the rewards, the smile on his face became even wider. The rewards for the science popularization of human civilization are indeed very high, one reward of 1 million rumor points, and one extra 10 consecutive special gashapons. It's a huge profit. I'm really grateful to the chaos separatists and the enthusiasm brought by the 12 round table council. If there was no 12 round table council to do things, Chen Feng would never have had the opportunity to make such a global speech. If Chen Feng himself conducted such a global live broadcast in normal times, it is estimated that most people would only watch it for fun and anecdotes. But after experiencing a biochemical crisis caused by the 008 zombie virus substrain, even the White Eagle Federation, the most powerful human country on the surface, almost said it. Humans around the world are almost in constant panic. At this time, Chen Feng held such a global speech and actively demonstrated the existence of the Foundation. Only in this way can it be highly valued. One of the fundamental disadvantages of human beings is that most people are short-sighted. If there is no crisis, who will take you seriously? Without this biochemical crisis, it would be almost impossible to obtain such a high rumor reward. Definitely thanks to Tony Stark's strength, without the assistance of Stark Group, Chen Feng would still need to spend some effort to build such a big battle on his own. In fact, disclosing the existence of the Foundation in this way is not in line with the original intention of the Foundation. After all, the Foundation needs to hide its own existence all the time. Even for those underworld scenes where containment fails, the Foundation will immediately detonate the site and destroy all traces of the Foundation's existence. However, the world is facing too many threats, and it is meaningless to hide the Foundation. In order to protect human civilization, the existence of the Foundation must be made public. Chen Feng discovered that the system seemed to be guiding him, or the Foundation, intentionally or unintentionally. It is necessary for the Foundation to become a leader of human civilization and unite all human beings to fight against foreign enemies. Maybe it's because the American comics world plus the containment is too dangerous. So the system guides itself that way. In any case, the Foundation's contingent is now ready to go. Agents from all over the country are fighting fiercely in the city, only to regain their homeland and their daily life. 
and the Commander-in-Chief of the Foundation, the Director of the Global Strategy Bureau, will become the core guiding them. In the live broadcast room that just ended, Ms. 2B, acting as a temporary adjutant, has already walked over with the latest situation information that has been sorted out. Commander, the latest battle situation has been sorted out. The Mobile Task Force Hammer Down and the Mobile Task Force Hell Paratroopers have completed deployment and are on standby and ready to be dispatched at any time. The first batch of agents of the Global Strategic Bureau, with a total of 100,000 agents, has begun to perform tasks of stabilizing the situation and assisting the JTF Joint Combat Forces to rebuild the safe zones of various cities. In the key areas, New York, Luo Shengdu, New Chicago and Raccoon City, the first batch of agents have initially established a safe area and gained a firm foothold. After Ms. 2B skillfully finished her report, she said the last bit of irrelevant news, finally, there are two shield agents outside who want to see you. Why? Chen Feng, who was holding the document, raised his eyebrows and asked a question, shield, s agent. Well, there's an old Mediterranean bald man who calls himself Phil Coulson. A strange look appeared on Phil Coulson, Chen Feng's face. He has always heard of Phil Coulson, the character who usually exists in the novice village in the American comics world, but he has never had the chance to see it, but now he actually sees it. Thinking that I have been in the American comics world for so long, Widow's sister, Sky, Tony and others have all seen it, but Phil Coulson has the chance to meet it now. Chen Feng didn't know that S.H.I.E.L.D. had already raised the importance of him to the highest level, but he always felt that his sense of existence was relatively low. The commander-in-chief of the Foundation has been searching for the enemy in the void, far underestimating the strength of the Foundation. It's no wonder, after all, after watching American comics for so long, Chen Feng has long admired the famous S.H.I.E.L.D. Who knew that S.H.I.E.L.D. would be in such a downturn when the Avengers Alliance was not established, and it would almost become a Snake S.H.I.E.L.D. Bureau. When Phil Coulson came to the door, Chen Feng readily agreed to his meeting request, and replied to Ms. 2B, let him in. It didn't take long for Chen Feng to recognize Phil Coulson and Melinda May's agent, who almost have the same image as the American TV series S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. An American polite smile appeared on Chen Feng's face. Agents Phil Coulson and May. You are welcome. Although it was Chen Feng's polite smile and polite handshake, but at this moment, Chen Feng was no longer the little transparent person who was slaughtered in the Atala cave. The current Chen Feng has a pivotal role. The heavyweight status of the commander-in-chief of the foundation and the director of the Global Strategy Bureau made Phil Coulson and Agent May flattered. Phil Coulson first expressed his thanks, and then asked cautiously, Thank you very much, Mr. Chen Feng, for meeting us in person. I am here on behalf of S.H.I.E.L.D. to discuss the cooperation with the Foundation. May I delay your time? Seeing such a careful and kind Phil Coulson, Chen Feng smiled, No problem, Detective Phil Coulson. As soon as he finished speaking, Miss 2B interrupted him unceremoniously. I'm sorry, Commander, your upcoming schedule is already full, have you forgotten? I'll have to meet the former director of the Global Strategy Bureau later. Chen Feng at the moment showed a slightly apologetic expression to Phil Coulson. Ah, I'm so sorry Mr. Phil Coulson, I forgot that the next schedule was so slow. Just when Phil Coulson and May Agent were already holding the mentality of returning disappointed. Chen Feng changed his tone and suggested, how about Agents Phil Coulson and Agent May, can I go to see the old gentleman with me? Hearing this, Phil Coulson and Agent May's originally dejected expressions were swept away and there was a look of joy on their faces. With a look of joy on his face, Phil Coulson subconsciously asked again, is there any problem? Mr. Chen Feng. Chen Feng smiled and nodded, definitely yes, after all, Agent Phil Coulson is a level 8 agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., so he has this qualification. It didn't take long for Chen Feng to board the custom-made extended Cadillac specially designed for the President of the Federation, which cost 150 million United States dollars a car. It is said that this car can even withstand the attack of nuclear weapons. The space in the car is very spacious. To be honest, although Phil Coulson and Agent May are high-level agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., it is the first time for them to sit in such a luxurious car. This is all due to Chen Feng's attention, this is a special car allocated to the director of the Global Strategy Bureau. There is even a small temperature-controlled wine cabinet in the car. 
Chen Feng skillfully took out an 82-year-old La Fight from the inside and poured it for the two of them. This flattered Phil Coulson and Agent May even more. Chen Feng's many years of experience in social animals makes him very good at buying people's hearts. Strictly speaking, his identity and status are higher than Nick. Fury's existence. Such an existence pours wine on Phil Coulson, an 8th level agent, let alone Agent May. They have never experienced such a battle, and they all feel that Commander Chen Feng is approachable. Such approachable big shots are rare. At this time, it was already snowing heavily in Washington, D.C., and there were military vehicles under martial law on the side of the road, but these fortified checkpoints immediately let go after encountering the convoy of the National Strategic Bureau. Wherever Chen Feng rode in a special vehicle that was comparable to the special car of the General Assembly Speaker, all the federal soldiers had to salute this special car honestly. Soon the convoy came to a farm in the suburbs of Washington, which seemed ordinary but was actually heavily guarded. In addition to the professional PMC armed guards guarding here, there are also quite a few non-dormant permanent agents of the Global Strategic Bureau. It's just that the guards were heavily guarded. After seeing Chen Feng's special car, all the checkpoints were released. The eyes of those agents all over the world were full of curiosity and anticipation as if they were looking at a sacred handover ceremony. Your Excellency Chen Feng, the former bureau chief has been waiting for you for a long time, please follow me. As soon as Chen Feng got out of the car, a beautiful OL female secretary in a skirt came up to him and then led them to the farm. Afterwards, Chen Feng and the others came to a place like a study and reception room on the farm. The most eye-catching thing in the room was a deer head specimen decoration. Beside the deer head decoration specimen, Chen Feng was stunned for a moment. Those are two flags, the Nirvana Phoenix flag of the Global Strategy Bureau and the Foundation flag. The moment an old man with gray hair and wrinkled face was wearing the uniform of a federal five-star general, when he saw Chen Feng, he subconsciously straightened his back and put down his cane. The attendants at the side hurried forward to support him, but he pushed him away. The old man stepped forward excitedly, his old eyes were full of tears because of the excitement, the old man raised his right hand laboriously to salute Chen Feng. Mobile Task Force Alpha 1, Red Right Hand. MTF Mobile Task Force Member Number 05961, pay tribute to the Commander-in-Chief of the Foundation. Mobile Task Force Alpha 1, has not yet completed the containment task, 05961 requests to return to the team, continue to complete the final containment operation. Chen Feng was silent for a while, he returned a military salute, and then patted the old man on the shoulder. The commander-in-chief of the foundation received that 05961 is allowed to return to the team and continue to complete the final containment task. The old man showed a dejected expression and let out a long sigh. It's been 60 years, commander-in-chief, if you don't come again, my old bones will be buried in the ground. Thank you for standing alone for 60 years, Admiral MT is proud of you. Don't call me Admiral, Commander, I will always be an MTF of the Foundation, and will always be a third-class Sergeant Major of the MTF. A third-rank Sergeant Major. That is an existence that has experienced at least 10 containment missions and survived. This can't help but make Chen Feng look sideways, he is indeed an eternally loyal MTF. What is loyalty, this is loyalty. Phil Coulson and May Agent at the moment on the side watched the scene in front of them dumbfounded. Phil Coulson's mouth can even fit an apple. Agent May asked in a low voice with a shocked face, this, is this really General Lois? That legendary hero during World War II, the partner who fought side by side with the Federation captain. Yes. That's right, it must be General Lois. General Lois is a Foundation Task Force. Oh my god. This is simply explosive news. The former director of the Global Strategy Bureau is actually the famous General Lois. And the Federation's five-star general, General Lois, was already a member of the Foundation's mobile task force 60 years ago. Phil Coulson and Agent May didn't know at all. Compared to the average mobile task force, the gold content of General Lois's third-level military chief. That was the food from Death God's hand, and he had to hammer Death God, and finally returned safe and sound. These people are like living legendary heroes. 
No wonder General Lois is so proud of the title of Sergeant Major of the MTF Mobile Task Force without mentioning his status as the five-star general of the Federation or the director of the Global Strategic Bureau. Unexpectedly, the former director of the Global Strategic Bureau was actually General Lois. This is a super boss of the federal military. His words have a much higher gold content than General Sheffield. Chen Feng finally knew why his cooperation with the military went so smoothly. Emotions are the reason why this is a living fossil. In fact, Chen Feng did not expect that Lois, the five-star general of the Federation Army, would be the former director of the Global Strategic Bureau. And the director of the Global Strategic Bureau is also a member of the Red Right Hand Mobile Task Force, and he is also a survivor of the task force that came to this world for unknown reasons 60 years ago. But one thing that is very interesting is that General Lois belongs to the special mobile task force called Red Right Hand. The Red Right Hand Mobile Task Force officially designated MTFALPHA1 Red Right Hand. As for why it is special, because there is a big difference between the Red Right Mobile Task Force and other mobile task forces. That is, the Red Right Hand Mobile Task Force is a mobile task force exclusive to the O5 Council. This mobile task force is composed of the Foundation's most elite armed forces and professionals, and does not accept any orders from members of the Council. And part of the Red Right Hand Mobile Task Force, happened to be, mutineers, and created the existence of the Chaos Insurgency. Where is this O5 Council sacred? First of all, this council is the letter zero instead of the Arabic numeral zero. Hence the O5 Council is also known as the O5 Command, Supervisor. These supervisors and commanders of the O5 Council are the highest controllers of the Foundation. The O5 Council is the Foundation's highest authority. Members of the O5 Council have the highest security level and authority, and have exclusive agents and mobile task forces. Members of the Council usually decide on major issues of the Foundation through collective decision making. O5 members of the Parliament can freely access all strategic information and confidential data of the 830, Foundation, including data deleted, and hidden content. Council members can arbitrarily grant and deprive others of the Foundation's security authority, and can even directly decide the life and death of employees. By voting, the Parliament can launch various plans that are unheard of or even unimaginable for the watch world, including restarting the world. Due to the possession of too many secrets, the positions of O5 Council members are tenured for life. The resigned members either died in office or defected from the foundation. Even retired members have basically received amnestics to prevent the leakage of secrets. The Red Right Hand, as an MTF mobile task force loyal to the O5 Council and even only obeying the dispatch of the O5 Council, came to this world, and it is suspected that it caused O8's containment to go out of control. There may be some ulterior secrets in it. At this time, Chen Feng naturally introduced Phil Coulson and Agent May to General Lois. These two are Phil Coulson Agent and May Agent, who came to me to discuss cooperation matters on behalf of S.H.I.E.L.D. They happened to come to visit, so I brought them along. Listening to Chen Feng's words, General Lois is a fine person, so he naturally understood what he meant. These two are outsiders of S.H.I.E.L.D. Pick what needs to be said and talk about other things after dismissing these two. So it's Agent Phil Coulson and Agent May from S.H.I.E.L.D., welcome, let's find a suitable place to talk. It seems that in every big shot, there are always some secret rooms in the homes of the rich and powerful, and the secret room of Admiral Lois is no exception, it is hidden in the study. General Wright found the mechanism from the bookcase, controlled it, and soon the secret door hidden in the bookcase opened, and a passage appeared. After passing through the bright passage, everyone came to a reception room full of classical Paris lock style. Take a seat wherever you want, young man. This was apparently addressed to Phil Coulson and May's agent. But at this time, Phil Coulson and Melinda stared blankly at a collection display case in front of them, where there was a shield that looked like the stars and stripes. It's just that the shield is covered with weird dark red lines like cobwebs. Phil Coulson pointed at the shield tremblingly, and stammered and asked, this, isn't this Captain America's shield? As a fanatical die-hard fan of Captain America, Phil Coulson noticed this collection at first sight after entering the reception room. After confirming several times with May Agent, Phil Coulson finally confirmed that this is Captain America's shield. 
After hearing Phil Coulson's question, Lois chuckled. That's right, young man, this is Captain America's shield. This answer puzzled both Phil Coulson and Agent May. Agent May on the side seemed a little confused. General, as far as I know, Captain America should have disappeared with his shield. What's going on with this shield? Phil Coulson on the side has pricked up his ears, with a very focused demeanor, for fear of missing a word. As a Captain America fanatic, Phil Coulson is very interested in the secrets of Captain America, which is information that even S.H.I.E.L.D. does not know. Definitely, Phil Coulson and Agent May would definitely not think that Admiral Lois would lie to them. After all, Admiral Lois has a high position and authority, and it is absolutely impossible for him to joke about this kind of thing. Captain America, Federation Captain, as a hero who has been promoted by the entire Federation for decades, is also closely related to S.H.I.E.L.D., so this matter is of great importance. General Lois, the former director of the Global Strategy Bureau, should be responsible for everything he said at this time. Therefore, after confirming the authenticity of the Captain America S.H.I.E.L.D., Phil Coulson was pleasantly surprised at first, and then confused and incredulous. With this extreme curiosity, both of them wanted to know what kind of past Lois would tell them about this shield. With General Lois instructed by Chen Feng, he naturally answered all the questions of these two curious shield agents. I'm pretty sure this buckler is Captain America's shield. Howard Stark made the first shield made of vibranium metal, but it was polluted by 008 after the containment mutation, so it became like this. It's just that what you don't know is that Howard Stark made a total of two shields like this back then. The Red Skull of Hydra once took control of Containment 008, and this shield was contaminated during a battle. Because we are worried that it will cause uncontrollable serious consequences, and we are worried that 008 will infect Captain America through this buckler shield, so we contain this buckler shield. The other side went missing with Captain America in the final encounter with the Red Skull. After hearing this secret, Phil Coulson's eyes widened, and he said hesitantly, you mean this shield is contaminated by the abnormal containment object 008? Isn't it very dangerous? General Lois laughed and waved his hand, if it was dangerous, would I still put it here? As early as more than 10 years ago, this shield had lost its threat, but we detected some substances from that year, it seems to have formed a symbiotic relationship with this shield, you can understand that this is a shield that has become a containment object. And it's a harmless containment object. Hearing this, Phil Coulson hesitated for a moment, and then boldly and cautiously proposed, General Lois, you know the importance of Captain America to shield. I wonder if you can, give up. It's a pity that General Lois refused without even thinking about it. He looked at Phil Coulson with a half smile and said, this is one of the few souvenirs I have as an old man. It is used to commemorate my old comrades. You shield will never count me as an old man. Bar. Phil Coulson waved his hands again and again, claiming not to dare. At this time, Chen Feng, who had been silent all this time, suddenly interjected, so what happened back then? Old Sergeant Major. Hearing this title, Admiral Lois fell into memory and thought, and after a while, he let out a long sigh. Sorry, Commander, I'm a bit old, it will take some time to remember. It's a long story about what happened back then, so I'll just pick out the important ones and summarize them briefly. Back then, we were ordered by the Foundation to investigate the failure of Containment Object 008. Through investigation, we found that 08's mother body was transferred to a secret laboratory. When we contained 008, a mutation occurred, and everyone present suffered from a mysterious magnetic field. Finally we're here. Speaking of this, Admiral Lois paused, took a cup of hot tea to moisten his throat, and then said, after that, it will be an old-fashioned story. Our team was split. Some people defected and defected to Red Skull, while the rest continued to complete the containment mission. For this reason, we had to temporarily cooperate with the Federation. Because the Red Skull was given containment 008 by the traitors at the time, the Federation was terrified that the Third Reich would acquire a horrific legion of living deadmen. At this time, we cooperated with Captain America and the then-agent Miss Carter to go deep behind enemy lines to sabotage and stop HYDRA's actions. It's a pity that in the last battle, although the Red Skull was successfully stopped, the task force failed to contain 008. At that time, 008 and the traitor did not know. After hearing this anecdote, 
Philip Coulson thought for a while and said, Your Excellency, since this is the case, can I report the news that this shield is with you to shield? After all, this consultation is very important to shield. General Lois waved his hand indifferently. That's your business, I won't stop it, who made the entanglement between Captain America and your shield so deep. Phil Coulson winked at Agent May at the side, and said goodbye respectfully, in this case, Agent May and I will report back first. Please go ahead. After speaking, Phil Coulson took Agent May and hurried away. After all, Phil Coulson is an old fritter who has been engaged in the agent industry for many years. He naturally knew that General Lois told this secret to send himself and Agent May away. After all, people from the two foundations are also the former and current directors of the Global Strategy Bureau, so there must be many confidential conversations. It's a great surprise to come here this time, and it's a big reward to discover Captain America's shield. At this time, I definitely can't continue to get in the way here. Sure enough, after the two left, both Chen Feng and General Lois knew that what they just said was the version that could be told to the outside world, and what they are going to talk about now is the internal version. Although the information just told to Phil Coulson and Agent May is all true, it's just that General Lois will definitely hide a little detail, not much, just a little bit. Now, the identity of General Lois has been transformed into Sergeant Major Lois. Then Sergeant Major Lois, can you tell me what exactly the O5 Council sent you to do? Definitely, Your Excellency the Commander, I have been preparing for this day for a long time, and I even thought I would not be able to wait for this day. Seeing this, Chen Feng looked at the gray-haired and aging General Lois, and was a little confused. Old Sergeant Major, why don't you use some strengthening medicine from the 008 substrain to keep yourself young? I think you should be able to do it. Lois laughed. General Commander, if the O5 Council does not exist, there are some secrets that I would rather bring into the coffin as a member of the Red Right Hand. If it wasn't for your appearance, those secrets should be buried with me. You should have been in your current position for a short time. Seeing this, Chen Feng was a little curious, how did you know about 3.1? The old Sergeant Major. It is not necessarily that the Commander-in-Chief will not. I don't know, the General Commander of the Foundation, Usually there will be 15 to 0 supreme speaker concurrently. Quote. Chen Feng was also a little dazed when he heard this. To be honest, he did know a lot of information about the foundation, but there were some deeper, or unwritten things, which he. It's completely ignorant. After all, the existence of the O5 Council, even the vast majority of personnel in the foundation do not know that there is such an organization, only E-level and above are qualified to know about the O5 Council. Meeting. Sergeant Major Lois took out a sealed metal box from the hidden safe in the hidden compartment with burning eyes. Sergeant Major Lois then solemnly handed it over to Chen Feng. This is the product of research in the mysterious laboratory that the O5 Council asked us to track down at the beginning. It was named Element 115, and it was also the culprit that brought our task force into this world at the time, and it was this element that caused the contamination mutation of 008. The 935 team, which cooperated with Red Skull back then, created the appalling Nova V and the terrifying Living Dead Man Legion through this and the mutated 008. Commander, this is a substance that does not exist on the blue planet Terra, it has many incredible powers. This is an indispensable force for you to rebuild the new O5 Council and the new foundation. Chen Feng took the box and nodded solemnly, don't worry, Sergeant Major Lois, I will make good use of it. Just when Chen Feng thought that the conversation with Sergeant Major Lois was over, he was about to get up and leave. Sergeant Major Lois suddenly stopped Chen Feng. Dear Commander-in-Chief, I wonder if you are willing to accept the allegiance of the Sheffield family. Chen Feng paused when he heard these words. He glanced at Sergeant Major Lois suspiciously, and suddenly thought that Sergeant Major Lois' surname seemed to be Sheffield. At this time, Chen Feng realized that Lois, the five-star general of the Federation, does not just mean a high-ranking position. It is difficult to become a high-ranking federal official, but it is even more difficult to integrate into the system. The best way to integrate into this system is to join the entire interest group. Sixty years have passed, Sergeant Major Lois, who knew everything about him back then, has now become Lois, a five-star general of the Federation. 
This means that he is no longer a pure sergeant major, but represents a typical American military family. Chen Feng knew the Sheffield family, which was a well-known family in the White Eagle Federation, and the most famous patriarch was naturally Lois Sheffield in front of him. The only remaining five-star general with outstanding achievements in the Federation. Over the past 60 years, the survivors of the contingent have already integrated into the collective of the Federation, and we've the complex military interest group. And this interest group is undoubtedly headed by General Lois. The Sheffield family is a standard military family. Up to now, the entire family has at least three generals in the Federation, and there are as many as a dozen high-ranking officers. At this time, Chen Feng took a deep look at the old Sergeant Major and said, Is it loyal to me instead of the Foundation? Elder Sergeant Lois smiled. Definitely, I am loyal to 09, not the Foundation. Does it make any difference? Definitely there are differences. For example, the supervisors of the O5 Council are the same as the Foundation. You should master some additional powers, such as rebuilding a red right hand. Hearing this, Chen Feng nodded and said with a smile, That's a good proposal, old Sergeant Major. After Sergeant Major Lois heard Chen Feng's affirmative answer, his face was relieved and his wish was fulfilled. Actually, I have been thinking about rebuilding the red right hand, and I have made preparations for it. Now that you have pledged Sheffield's allegiance, it is time. Sergeant Lois clapped his hands. A tall and cold beauty with blonde hair and blue eyes, wearing a federal women's military uniform, walked in slowly. Sergeant Major Lois looked at the aloof female officer who came in, with a kind smile on his face. Elaine, come forward. Sergeant Major Lois introduced to Chen Feng with a smile. Elaine, my best granddaughter, and the best junior in Sheffield. Graduated from West Point Military Academy as the first grade in the grade, and then entered the Federal Special Operations Command. Now Elaine is the youngest Major General in the Federal Army, and her position is the commander of the North American Division of the Federal Special Operations Command. Commander, oh no, it's the Speaker, I think Elaine will be your excellent right-hand man. After finishing speaking, Elaine quietly walked in front of Chen Feng, and knelt down on one knee like a knight who received the canonization in the ancient West. Elaine Sheffield, in the name of the Sheffield family, I swear by my soul, that I will always be loyal to your excellency Chen Feng and never betray you. Looking at this scene, Chen Feng was a little at a loss, and suddenly remembered something, picked up an officer's saber that he had been carrying all along, and handed it over. I accept your allegiance, Miss Elaine Sheffield. Elaine took Chen Feng's saber solemnly, and solemnly swore, Loyalty is my honor, from now on, I will be your sharp blade, worthy of the name of Sheffield, for your glory war. Chen Feng glanced at the old Sergeant Major Lois who was smiling like a dog. Now Chen Feng is convinced that Lois is worthy of being the Red Right Hand's task force, and is the most loyal and fanatical task force member who has deeply rooted the Red Right Hand's concept into his mind. His style of acting has a strong red right hand color. So his allegiance is to himself as the commander in chief of the foundation, which means to become the supreme speaker of the O5 council, not to the foundation. At the same time, after ensuring loyalty, binding the Sheffield family as a subsidiary family of the O5 council can be described as vicious. Even so, Chen Feng accepted the Sheffield family's defection without hesitation. It's okay for subordinates to have selfishness, no matter who they are, as long as they are loyal, what's the problem with selfishness? The defection of the Sheffield family will undoubtedly allow him to have huge amounts of influence in the Federation, at least the military foundation can have great authority. Many resources of the federal military can be utilized. Chen Feng suddenly understood why the old Sergeant Major Lois joined the federal army, it was indeed a scheming plan. You must know that the federal military is different from the military of many other countries in that many senior officials of the federal military actually have their own private armed forces. Moreover, the country of the White Eagle Federation is also the country with the most private military contractors, which means that it is very easy to cultivate one's own private army, especially those senior officials of the federal military will use it to make profits. Otherwise, how could there be so many high-level federal officers who retired and became honorary advisors to those military-industrial complexes and private military contractors? Otherwise, where did those 1,000 United States dollars coffee cups and 1 million United States dollars sheep come from? 
A hexagonal building investigated a military case, and the amount involved was as high as hundreds of billions of USD, but in the end it was ignored. If you think about it for a while, you will know how deep the water is inside. The old Sergeant Major Lois joined the federal military. I am afraid he also borrowed chickens to lay eggs and used the federal military to form his own private force. He also thought that after the Foundation came to this world, he could use this private force group to become a subsidiary of the Foundation. Power. The red right hand who has been planning for 60 years for this is really terrible. At this time, the old Sergeant Major Lois cleared his throat with a cough and said, Elaine, please introduce the power you have to the speaker. Elaine saluted a military salute, and then said in detail, Yes, Mr. Speaker, as the commander of the Federal North American Special Operations Command, I can mobilize at least 18,000 combat personnel. It includes 10,000 shadow troops who do not exist on the federal list as private armed forces in Sheffield. Of the other 8,000 combat personnel, Delta Force, SEAL Team 6 and the Air Force's 24th Special Tactics Team. And we have our own intelligence branch, drones and reconnaissance aircraft, our own dedicated satellites, and our own dedicated cyber warfare personnel. The Federal North American Special Operations Command has its own intelligence station in every country in the entire American continent. If you give an order, we can immediately conduct reconnaissance, hunting, arrest, waiting for the task. Even in the non-military field, we can conduct investigations such as investigating the flow of funds in international banks to see if the money flows to terrorist networks, and conduct psychological operations or military, intelligence operations, and so on. In addition, I am currently in charge of creating an unprecedented special forces unit, codenamed Task Force 141, drawn from the entire Allied member states. When talking about Task Force 141, Chen Feng's face became a little uneasy. What? Task Force 141? Huh? What's the matter, my lord? Is there something wrong with this task force? It's okay, you can continue talking. Could it be the Task Force 141? Chen Feng thought to himself, but in the next second he heard Elaine Na say. The current 437 field commanders of Task Force 141 are Captain John Price from the SAS, and Lieutenant Simon Riley, codenamed Ghost, also from the SAS. Most of these players come from Olia, Montana, and Britannia, and definitely the mainland of the Federation. At present, this force belongs to a secret force formed to perform special tasks. This is the specific list of members. Chen Feng took the list and looked at it, good guy, it is exactly the same as the list he saw while playing Call of Duty. Task Force 141 is full of great people. Thinking of the insane achievements in the game, Chen Feng looked suspiciously at Elaine, who looked like a mature lady in her 20s. This woman actually holds such a powerful military force in her hands. It can be said that most of the special forces of the Federation have been captured by her. What's even more frightening is that according to the list information Chen Feng saw, the first one was Elaine, who was only 25 years old. A federal major general who is only 25 years old is simply incredible. But if you think about it carefully, Elaine was born in the Sheffield family, and her grandfather is the only remaining five-star general of the Federation Army, and the former director of the Global Strategy Bureau. Moreover, his father is also a lieutenant general of the Federation, which can be said to be a prestigious family. Born in such a well-to-do family, with excellent family education, billion points, of interpersonal relationships, coupled with his outstanding ability, he graduated from West Point Military Academy with the first place in his age, and even got a double doctorate. With both housework and ability, it couldn't be easier to get ahead. So Elaine became a federal major general at only 25 years old, which couldn't be more normal. Thinking about it this way, Chen Feng could only sigh with emotion, the old Sergeant Major Lois is indeed a red-handed loyalist, he is simply loyal. The power that the Sheffield family has managed for 60 years has been handed over to him in this way. What a loyal old Sergeant Major. Didi, the driver in front honked the horn to disperse the civilians in front of the Humvee military vehicle. After Chen Feng bid farewell to the old Sergeant Major Lois, he brought people to New York, Manhattan. Before leaving, Chen Feng ordered Elaine to carry out a mission to search for information about the living dead man Corps left by the 935 team. 
When leaving, Chen Feng also triggered a new system task as a matter of necessity. Reorganize the O5 Council, complete three containment tasks, and upgrade the authority to A level to take over the position of the Supreme Speaker. Sub-tasks, investigate the 935 team and Nova 6, and collect more 115 elements. Sir, we may have to get out of the car and walk, the 11th Street Road is impassable for vehicles. As an old city in Manhattan, there were originally many alleys, and the main roads were blocked by the federal government. At the moment, the roads were full of roadblocks, various sundries, and abandoned vehicles. Even a military Humvee would be impassable on such a road, unless a main battle tank is used to open the way and run over it all the way. Looking at the congested and impassable road, the driver could only give Chen Feng an apologetic look and let everyone get off the bus. Okay, Miss 2B, let's get off. Chen Feng opened the car door, a gust of cold wind blows in his face, and the Manhattan area at the moment has been covered with snow. Winter in New York is gloomy, gloomy city with gloomy snow, and bleak streets on the road, and occasionally civilians in a hurry. The current situation in Manhattan, to be honest, is not as bad as Chen Feng imagined. When it comes to zombies, everyone always thinks of the infection that spreads immediately in a very short period of time. In fact, what Chen Feng sees now is still a city in the hands of human beings. Unless it is a large-scale air infection, the way to make zombies is to rely solely on biting, scratching and bodily fluid infection. It is impossible to destroy human civilization with the zombie virus alone before the scale is formed or enough powerful infected people are born. Coupled with the fact that almost all citizens of the Federation have guns, he will not be in chaos if everyone has a gun. In this kind of situation where the martial arts of the whole people are abundant and almost every household has guns, if the zombies want to cause a large number of spread immediately, it cannot be done in a short time. What's more, with the efforts of the JTF Joint Combat Force, agents throughout the territory, and the federal military, in the end, except for Raccoon City, other cities in the Federation did not cause large-scale infection and fall. Even in Raccoon City, it is said that only 70% of the urban area was occupied, and the survivors in the city continued to resist the infection. The local police even carried out several confiscation operations, confiscating zombies in several blocks. In Manhattan, except for a few infected neighborhoods, almost no infected people can be seen in most places. What was really fatal was the interruption of logistics caused by the blockade of the whole territory, the out of control of law and order, the appearance of rebel troops in the city, and various PMCs who burned, killed and looted, as well as out of control gangs and mobs. It's just that although these are the real threats, compared to the hell in the infected area, at least the civilians in these human-controlled blocks can still live. Even if Chen Feng only traveled for a short period of time, he could encounter civilians being robbed of their property and daily necessities by mobs several times. Either encountering TFs and unknown militants exchanging fire, or even scenes where agents wiped out mobs throughout the territory. Definitely, almost no one would provoke Chen Feng and his party. The group of murderous and armed MTF task force who followed him was not easy to provoke. This is also the evil result of the whole people holding guns. Everyone has a gun. When there is no food, your good neighbor with a gun will come to ask you to borrow food. If you don't stock up on guns at this time, then I'm sorry, you can only put a smile on your face and kindly give your material assistance to your good neighbors, and maintain a friendly neighbor relationship. After all, distant relatives are not as good as close neighbors. At this time, even the priests of the church can only use ARL5 to spread the gospel. Compared with the scenes of soldiers and civilians in ordinary human-controlled areas mingling together and neighbors being kind to each other, Chen Feng couldn't see it when he was close to the infected area. Chen Feng saw the Black Watch helicopter flying overhead more than once. The high isolation wall divided the infected area into two worlds, and the Black Watch soldiers surrounded and isolated these areas. Although the Black Watch is an armed force controlled by the Council of the Twelve Round Tables, this force is clearly still a legal federal armed force and is a part of the military's control. They don't go anywhere except the infected area, but they also strictly prohibit other armed forces from entering the infected area on the grounds of isolating the infection. This kind of behavior makes them like neutral troops, just performing their tasks silently, and no one attacks them. 
At this time, Chen Feng would naturally not take the initiative to let his own people kill Black Watch. After all, although there are various signs and behaviors of this armed force now that they have a bigger conspiracy, and they are also cooperating with the Umbrella, and more intelligence shows that they seem to be one of the promoters of the blockade across the country. But in the absence of evidence, they cannot be judged as illegal hostile armed forces. Furthermore, Chen Feng also needs such an enemy to exist. If no one is doing things anymore, how can he fish in troubled waters and play by ear? If all these potential enemies are wiped out, it will definitely not be a good thing for the Foundation. Considering all kinds of wars that may break out on the earth in the future, in Chen Feng's view, it is still necessary to maintain the enemy and maintain a certain scale of conflicts, so that the human beings on the blue planet Terra can maintain a sense of crisis and gain opportunities for advancement. Definitely, in order to preserve human civilization, we can only suffer from the Federation in those advanced countries. Just when Chen Feng came to the edge of the infected area, their team quickly aroused the vigilance of the Black Watch. Backquote, stop advancing, you are entering the exclusion zone. It is forbidden to enter here, the Federal Army's activity area is not within this range. Chen Feng didn't, Nuo Qian's, step forward to negotiate, but just winked at a task force officer next to him, and he immediately stepped forward and took out the documents very bluntly. We have obtained authorization from Washington. This is our document, let it go immediately. On the separation wall, there were also these black guard soldiers holding guns guarding the checkpoints. After seeing their chiefs glanced at the documents, they waved helplessly to the soldiers on the side and said, let go, let's go. Let them in. After the officer watched Chen Feng and others walk into the quarantine area, the Black Watch officer picked up the radio, report that 10 military investigation team members entered the infected area. Received, try not to let them see what they shouldn't see, and let the experimental group restrain themselves. Chen Feng, who entered the infected area of Manhattan with a military investigation team, has already passed the induction ability of the psychic commander, and knows that his pedestrians are under the strict monitoring of the Black Watch. Not long ago, Chen Feng received a request for help from Agent Catherine of the Global Strategy Bureau. Originally, Agents Catherine, Gwen, and Elloweather planned to go directly to the Red Rock Fort Base. But it just so happened that they met the moment when the infection broke out, followed by martial law and the nationwide blockade of the entire Federation. Then they were trapped in the infected area. Originally, with the abilities of Gwen and Alloweather, they could escape here, but at this time they found something different to seek. Blackwatch appears to be running some shady operations in the infested zone. So Catherine found a safe house of the Global Strategy Bureau inside the infected area, and used the internal equipment to send a request for help to the Redstone Fort military base. So Agent Sky and Agent Natasha Romanoff of Redstone Fort volunteered their request and a team of MTF task force who acted together infiltrated into the infected area to join Catherine, Gwen, and Elloweather who were trapped here. After converging, they found that the infection area became somewhat unusual. First, a large number of flesh-like creepers began to appear in the infection area and began to erode various buildings, forming something like a nest. Subsequently, these nests will breed a large number of mutated creatures, the most of which are zombies born from the nests. After Black Watch took over these areas, for some unknown purpose, they did not immediately, sterilize, all kinds of mutated areas. Instead, like raising GU, he started to build secret laboratories everywhere, and conducted various experiments and research on various mutant creatures. At this time, Gwen discovered an unusual area controlled by Blackwatch, which was originally an ordinary waste processing plant. However, after the outbreak, it was quickly controlled by Blackwatch, and there were often Blackwatch convoys entering and leaving there. After discovering this abnormal location, Sky and the Widow first reported to S.H.I.E.L.D., and finally asked the left behind all territory agent and the MTF Mobile Task Force 700 who were working together to upload the information to the Foundation. They then went to investigate with the SHIELD Anomaly Handling Team and a team of MTF who came to support. After the suspected firefight with unknown creatures, it didn't take long for Catherine, Spider Gwen, and Eloesser to suddenly lose contact with Sky and the Widow. After that, they asked the Redstone Fort military base for reinforcements from agents throughout the territory. 
But since this place has been blocked by the Black Watch, as a last resort, the Redstone Fort base had to report the information. After Chen Feng got the news, he decided to come to investigate in person. After all, it must not be a trivial matter that can make the widow sister and Sky lose contact. After Phil Coulson requested cooperation with the Foundation and obtained Chen Feng's consent, Chen Feng temporarily obtained the command of the Shield Anomaly Handling Team. The premise is that as long as it is a reasonable order, the other party will assist the Foundation to complete it. All goals are to quell the crisis that broke out in the White Eagle Federation as soon as possible. The Widow Sister and Sky's investigation was also approved by Chen Feng. At this time, something happened and they disappeared. In addition to those S.H.I.E.L.D. agents who acted together and the vanguard of an MTF mobile task force, there were 60 people in total. Chen Feng couldn't help but not pay attention to this matter. After much deliberation, Chen Feng decided to lead a team to investigate in person. With the fighting power of Widow Sister and Sky, as well as the fighting power of the 60 MTF and S.H.I.E.L.D. elite agents, Chen Feng judged that it was impossible for the entire army to be wiped out. But it is very likely that they encountered a special situation and were unable to communicate with the outside world. Maybe they encountered a containment object or some other special situation. Coupled with the Black Watch's blockade of this place, Chen Feng temporarily planned to stand still until the Federation completely broke with the Black Watch, so he brought a group of people here disguised as military investigators. Definitely, when Chen Feng participated in the video speech before, the Foundation naturally provided some technical support, and the equipment during the speech has been specially adjusted, so during the global live broadcast, the image of Chen Feng seen by the audience is different from the reality less gap. Otherwise, AJBC, if his appearance is known all over the world, how can he carry out this kind of infiltration mission? At this time, although Black Watch attached great importance to this military investigation team, the situation in the infected area, in fact, Black Watch did not dare to say that it had 100% control. The attack of a large number of mutated creatures and infected people made by the Nest forced Black Watch to conduct 24-hour high-intensity inspection and control. And because of some ulterior motives, the Black Watch cannot kill all the lairs in the infected area. Thus, the scene in front of Chen Feng appeared. When a Black Watch drone was still monitoring Chen Feng and his group above their heads, suddenly a group of Black Watch soldiers patrolling in front heard the sound coming from the headset. Patrol number 19, there is a situation. What's wrong? It seems that there are infected people. As soon as the words fell, two beautiful white-collar women in OL skirts ran towards the patrol team in disgrace. Help! Help me! The woman screamed across the patrol and fell behind them. At this moment, densely packed zombies rushed out from the circle. Find the enemy situation, open fire freely. While speaking, the patrol team of Black Watch immediately formed a battle formation, leaning on the cover and pouring firepower at the densely packed zombies. Accompanied by machine guns, assault rifles, and the suppression of the grenades thrown by the grenade launcher, the dense gunfire suppressed all the flesh and blood zombies. Those zombies seem to be born in the lair, but they look like people, with pale skin. How can a flesh and blood body be an opponent of guns? Soon these zombies were all shot to death under the dense rain of bullets. The small wave of corpses composed of hundreds of zombies, against the Black Watch Patrol team composed of more than a dozen people, all of them did not even set off 10 ripples, was wiped out. The enemy situation has been eliminated, and all sources of infection have begun to be eliminated. While speaking, the leader of the Black Watch team pointed a gun at the forehead of the OL female white-collar worker. In the shocked and unbelievable eyes of the tearful OL lady, in her pupils is the cold gas mask under the green night vision goggles. What are you doing? No. Mary. With a gunshot, one of the daughters turned into a cold corpse. The MTFs who witnessed all this could not bear it anymore. WTF. What the hell are these people doing? Shet. Sir. They're shooting civilians and they're not even checking for infection. The six MTFs wearing army uniforms next to Chen Feng ran up to the head sergeant and stopped them loudly without thinking, stop shooting. Soldiers, what are you doing? Who are you? Federal Army. The military didn't inform you that you are not allowed to interfere with Black Watch's operations in the infected area. The captain of Black Watch asked very bluntly. We are members of the military investigation team. 
HMPH, the military investigation team. Blackwatch's squad leader sneered, and without thinking, he aimed directly at the last survivor on the side and was about to pull the trigger to kill him. At this moment, a woman with red and white hair and a hooded cloak jumped down from the top of the building. The leader of the Black Watch squad who was just about to be executed was cut in half by the sharp biological knife in an instant. Oh shit. She's coming. The witch. The witch. Fire. Seeing the leader of the Black Watch who had been split in two, the remaining Black Watch soldiers lost all intention of continuing the execution, and pointed their guns at the girl one after another and pulled the triggers. I saw that the girl's hands turned into biological blades were transformed into a shield made of horny at this moment, and the bullets could not effectively kill this horny shield at all. Immediately afterwards, the girl jumped lightly, and shuttled among the soldiers of the Black Watch like a cat. The horny shield in his hand turned into sharp claws, easily cutting through the flesh and blood of those Black Watch soldiers, even body armor and guns couldn't stop those two terrifying sharp claws. Go to hell, Miko. A Black Watch soldier pulled out his AT-4, aimed at Alloweather who was slaughtering his comrades and fired a high explosive bomb. Accompanied by the sound of an explosion, gunpowder smoke diffused over the station, and it took a while for the gunpowder smoke to gradually dissipate. At this time, a soldier on the ground wearing a Black Watch uniform stretched out his hand with difficulty. The last Black Watch survivor immediately ran forward to help his comrade up, and the next moment the red and black biological blade pierced his heart. Under the unbelievable gaze of the black watchman, his teammate turned into a mature lady with red and white hair who was wearing a hooded cloak before. A few MTF at the moment on the side protected the remaining survivor, still raising their guns and watching everything in front of them. Although they couldn't see the behavior of the black watch troops, they didn't know whether the inhuman girl in front of them was an enemy or a friend, and with the opponent's terrifying combat power, if they attacked their own side. Thinking that Chen Feng, the general commander of the Foundation, is not far away, several members of the MTF Mobile Task Force dare not be careless. Put down the gun, she's not the enemy. The familiar figure of Chen Feng came from behind the task force members, and the team members put down their pistols with relief. On the contrary, the unlucky survivor, Miss Sister, escaped from death at the moment, and was almost frightened out of her wits. You are Miss Alloweather. Chen Feng stepped forward, looked up and down the red and white haired girl in a cloak and asked. Are you the Foundation's backup? You came too slowly. It's not too late. While Chen Feng was speaking, he took out his service pistol and fired a shot into the sky without even aiming. Immediately afterwards, the Black Watch drone that had just flown over to investigate the situation was shot down. This is not a place to talk, let's talk slowly in another place, bring the survivors, and let's leave here. Aloesser could tell who was the leader here, but she didn't say anything, she just led the way silently, leading Chen Feng and the others to the safe house of the Global Strategy Bureau. But at this time Chen Feng was not as calm as he appeared on the surface. Ding! Found the abnormal containment object 008 Mother, please take containment measures immediately, the creature is extremely dangerous. Ding, the abnormal situation of 008 was detected, triggering a new main line. Commander please investigate what happened to 08's mother. Chen Feng never imagined that he always thought that the abnormal containment object 008 would be hidden somewhere by the 12 round table council, or the branch controlled by the chaos separatists. However, now he realizes that his previous conjectures were all wrong, extremely wrong. Abnormal Containment 008 The mother body of the zombie virus, is actually the frail and mature Ms. Yufeng, who used to be a top researcher of the Black Watch, Ms. Aloesser. And thinking of her ability, and the Black Watch organization, Chen Feng even thought of his former. A work that has been played by the world, killing the original form. But the protagonist of the original massacre is not Alex, brother A. How did it become a young lady named Aloweather? And according to the files Chen Feng consulted, the experiences of Alex and Aloweather are completely different. Chen Feng suddenly thought of something, there is Spider Gwen here. The existence of Spider Gwen and Spider Man Peter. Parker are almost two completely different parallel worlds. In the normal American comics world, if there is Spider-Man, there is no Spider-Gwen, and there is absolutely no Spider-Man in the world with Spider-Gwen. 
This touches on the theory of parallel worlds, and perhaps it's no surprise that a blacklight virus has appeared in this strange world of American comics now. After being confirmed by the system, Chen Feng confirmed that Aloeather is the mutated mother strain of the abnormal containment 008 zombie virus, and also integrated the host of the blacklight virus. Thinking that Aloeather was actually the product of containment 008 and the blacklight virus integrate, Chen Feng felt that this containment task might not be that simple. Just when Chen Feng met Aloeather, who was judged by the system to be the mother of 008, Raccoon City, the main city in the Arclay Mountains of the Federation, had fallen into a state of near destruction. Raccoon City, with a population of nearly 1 million, is the area where the virus infection spreads the most because it is the headquarters of the Umbrella Corporation. As early as the 20th, the T-virus had leaked from the beehive of the Umbrella Underground Research Facility in Raccoon City. The umbrellas were arranged around the outskirts of Raccoon City, and various facilities in the Acre Mountains fell one after another. And everything is derived from the choice of the chaos splitters of the Round Table Council. The umbrella of Umbrella has been split, and the Foundation faction headed by Ophelia and the Round Table faction headed by the Spencer family are in full swing. At this time, under the control of the Spencer family, a virus leak occurred in the hive, and nearly 2,000 Umbrella employees of the Foundation faction all died in the hive. Afterwards, the Spencer family, which had already taken the upper hand, contacted various insiders in the city, accelerating the spread of the virus in Raccoon City, and took the opportunity to seize a large number of research results, and at the same time released all the BOW biological weapons of the Umbrella Research Institute in Raccoon City, launching an indiscriminate attack on the living people in the city. The headquarters of the Umbrella Company managed by Chaos Separatists, Raccoon City, under the multiple attacks of ghosts, viruses, and bow, in just a few days, more than 80% of the residents either lost their lives or turned into zombies. Knowing that most of the residents of Raccoon City are Umbrella's high-level talents and researchers, the Umbrella Company's vitality was severely damaged. At the same time, the Umbrella Armed Forces controlled by the two factions, also due to the split, these former colleagues fought each other, and Raccoon City has now been reduced to purgatory. Somewhere in the Arclay Mountains, in the secret castle of the Spencer family, an old man sitting in a wheelchair, with various tubes inserted all over his body, and hanging a special nutrient solution, is watching through the setting sun. Raccoon City in the distance. He is Umbrella, the ruler of the Spencer family, Oswell E. Spencer. Oswell Spencer did not maintain his youth like Ophelia. Fate seemed to have played a joke on him. Even the specially prepared T-virus could not adapt to his physique. So he had to rely on this wheelchair with a specially made life support device to maintain his life, so he had extremely strong hatred and hatred for Ophelia Oswell Spencer who was able to maintain his youth. It is also for this reason that the behemoth of the protective umbrella is split under the struggle for power and profit of the chaos separatists, and this huge force kills each other for this reason. At the same time, because of Oswell's body, he has a terrifying obsession with longevity, which makes people develop new viruses one after another crazily, and conduct various inhumane biochemical experiments. Until he met the Twelve Round Table Council, and after getting an agreement from the Twelve Round Table Council, he decided to support that crazy plan. After the biochemical crisis was launched in the entire Federation and severely damaged the Federation's military strength, it seized the control of the Federation through the chaotic situation. After that, Spencer will get the promise of the Council of the Twelve Round Tables to help him improve the T-virus and prolong his life in order to seek longevity. Patriarch, all the Ophelia faction forces in Raccoon City have been suppressed, and BOW's test has been proceeding in an orderly manner. Everything is going smoothly as planned. Hearing the report from his subordinates, Oswell E. Spencer still stared at the sunset intently without raising his eyes. As a hero, he has experienced too many such struggles for power. The big three who originally created the umbrella, now only Orwell E. Spencer is left, which is enough to explain everything. Definitely, even Oswell E. Spencer and the Council of the Twelve Round Tables don't know that Ophelia has already received the support of the Foundation. If they had known, they probably wouldn't have launched it so early plan. Don't take it lightly, that woman Ophelia is not that simple.
Although she hastily launched an action against the Foundation last time and suffered a disastrous failure, her disappearance does not mean that she has failed. Let the Black Watch who supported us launch an offensive together, and we cannot simply let our people to bleed, use BOW more to gain valuable combat data. Obey, Patriarch. The Umbrella Director, who was loyal to Spencer, stepped back slowly. Oswell E. Spencer watched the sunset quietly and closed his eyes. Brothers are fighting each other, who will have the last laugh. At the moment, in the city of Raccoon City, at the police station, a team of USS Special Forces under the umbrella entered here, but when they entered the police station, they found that they were greeted by dozens of guns. They are all surviving police officers in the police station and members of STARS. Don't shoot, we are not the enemy. Shut up, umbrella lackeys, you're the ones who messed up the whole city. The captain of the USS team, codenamed Death God Hank, watched this scene, silently holding the flash bomb in one hand. As people loyal to the Ophelia faction, the USS troops have been purged. Until now, due to the absence of the backbone, these umbrella troops of the Ophelia faction have not fully reacted. At this moment, Chris, a member of STARS, suddenly said, Wait a minute, don't get excited, my teammate Valentine and I did see the umbrella people killing each other when we were in action yesterday, let's listen to them first. How to say? We will not disclose company information, but I can tell you with certainty that we are not the enemy. Then please leave, we don't welcome you here. When the two sides were arguing, Hank sighed and made up his mind to explain. Now there is nothing to hide, the company is extremely chaotic, and no one knows who is in charge. Seeing this, the members of this team of USS Special Forces immediately became depressed. The umbrella is split, and a group of people are madly releasing the virus developed in cooperation with the military in the laboratory to attack everyone. We were the faction ordered to control the infection, and we were even attacked by our own faction. Hearing this, everyone became silent. It's a crazy world, what are you doing with your umbrellas, at least hundreds of thousands of people died here. We also want to get to the bottom of things. At this moment, Hank's radio suddenly rang. I'm the Umbrella Military Director, Ophelia. All friendly units or Umbrella survivors are requested to take refuge in the following places in front of Umbrella. After 10 minutes, the BOW tyrant will be released to control the situation in Raccoon City. Did you hear that? It's Director Ophelia, she's back. I knew she was fine. Backup is here, it seems we are saved. At the moment, the Blackwatch commander in charge of the operation and the Umbrella forces controlled by the Spencer family also received the 10 radios sent on the Umbrella channel. Is this woman Ophelia crazy? Sending this message on the public channel is to gather all her people together and let us kill her. It's really stupid. They have already suffered heavy losses, and now they can still have extra troops to organize a counterattack. B.O.W. Things like hunters and lickers. Can they turn the situation back? Sir, we found some aerial targets passing by at a high altitude. Do we want to launch anti-aircraft missiles to shoot down those targets? The Blackwatch commander sneered. Definitely want to shoot them down. Stupid woman, she thinks BOW can make a comeback. We just shoot down all the planes transporting BOW. Give me an air defense position and shoot down all the air targets. Deployed on the Black Watch air defense position on the outskirts of the city, a total of six Avenger air defense missile systems were activated under the guidance of ground radar. The target has entered the maximum range and can be launched. The target height is 5 km and the distance is 6.1 km. The missile is launched. Fire. Under the night, bright lights rose from the anti-aircraft missiles, and one missile after another was lifted into the air, knocking down the shadows that flitted across the sky. Target 1 destroyed. Target 3 number. 4 destroyed. 12 targets, all destroyed. It's a piece of cake, is that what they do? However, the ground-based anti-aircraft missiles of Black Watch did not expect that 6 A-181 electronic warfare all airspace fighters had already been deployed to the designated attack positions at the moment. The decoy has been destroyed, the target air defense position is found, and the anti-radiation missile is launched. Firefox 1 has been launched, changed the altitude, detected the abnormal data area, and is preparing to launch the AGMV missile. Not long after being happy, the radar soldier suddenly screamed on the Black Watch air defense position. Missiles detected. 
Hurry up and hide. While speaking, he desperately pressed the alarm, but only a few seconds later, accompanied by several huge amounts of explosions, all the anti-aircraft vehicles were blown into fireballs, the air defense positions were reduced to a sea of flames. The same scene happened at the radar station in Blackwatch. Sir, we've lost contact with the air defense positions. Sir, it seems that something is wrong, the radar is abnormal, hell. What is this? We have been electronically suppressed. There is a data anomaly. As soon as the words fell, two AMGV air-to-surface missiles sent a surprise with their tail flames. The ground is cleared for BOW. Received, the transport unit has arrived and is ready to drop the BOW. In the air, 12 C-130 military transport planes painted with the umbrella logo slowly flew over Raccoon City, and huge metal containers were thrown out of the hatch one after another. After being dropped out of the hatch, the parachutes on these huge metal containers opened one after another. On the chaotic streets full of zombies and various armed forces fighting, everyone saw the huge metal containers dropped from the sky. What the hell are those things? A group of Blackwatch soldiers watched a huge amount of metal container being dropped on the street near them, and the movement of the soldiers even caused commotion among the bereaved households nearby. However, they still received orders to reconnaissance. When the team of black guards walked to the area where the projectile was located, what they saw was a cylindrical metal container with huge amounts of a figure looming inside. As the hatch was opened, white cold air escaped, which seemed to indicate that the terrifying creatures inside were thawing and waking up. All the soldiers of the black watch raised their weapons one after another, arranged their formation, and carefully looked at the metal container in front of them. In the next second, they saw a titan with a height of nearly 3 meters appearing in front of their eyes. The titan was wearing a black leather jacket, with a bald head and pale skin that did not resemble a human being. What is this? Fire. Kill him. The captain of the Black Watch decisively issued an order, and the gun shot instantly. There was a sound, and dozens of muzzles sprayed out flames, accompanied by a burst of firepower and smoke. Ophelia sat gracefully in the air command center converted from a transport plane, looking at the screens one by one, showing an extremely charming smile. Sir, tyrant number 9, tyrant number 13, and tyrant number 20 are starting to engage the enemy. Do you want to issue an attack order? Let the game begin. The operator pushes the button. All tyrants have received orders to attack at this moment. Before the smoke dissipated, the captain of the Black Watch team vaguely saw the figure in the smoke, and then heard dull footsteps, it was that monster. Use the 40mm grenade. As soon as the words fell, several members of the Black Watch team fired 40mm grenades, but the sound of the explosion did not affect the monster's charge at all. Use the AT-4 bazooka. Kill him. A team member picked up the AT-4 anti-tank rocket launcher, aimed at the tyrant and fired an anti-tank rocket. The next second he was surprised to find out that a sneer appeared on the face of that terrifying weirdo. Then he grabbed the rocket abruptly and swung it upwards, changing the trajectory, and the rocket exploded into the sky in an instant. In the exclamation of the squad leader, all the soldiers of Black Watch frantically poured ammunition at the target. Accompanied by a terrifying sense of oppression, even when the tyrant was running at high speed, cracks appeared on the ground to a certain extent. Take cover. Amid the desperate cries, the tyrant jumped up, and with a heavy punch, the ground was smashed open with a bang, and a soldier named Black Watch died instantly. The desperate squad leader raised the weapon in his hand to block, and his whole body was smashed into a ball of meat sauce. When the anti-tank man was about to launch another AT-4, he saw the tyrant lift up an abandoned car and smash it directly. Accompanied by a loud noise and filled with smoke, only sporadic gunshots remained, and soon, all the gunshots disappeared. Ophelia smiled and raised the red wine in her hand, feeling that it was extremely delicious. At this moment in Raccoon City, after the reinforcements led by Ophelia launched an offensive, the situation suddenly turned huge. Ophelia dropped a total of 126 T-103 tyrants into Raccoon City to accompany the Chaos Insurgency forces on the attack. And under the suppression of the air power supported by the Foundation, just 15 minutes before the start of the war, various important facilities of the hostile forces were completely destroyed. The command headquarters, radar stations, airports, logistics centers, and areas where heavy troops are assembled have all been bombed. 
In order to save the defeat, the Spencer family and Blackwatch had to release all the biological weapons developed by the Umbrella in Raccoon City to fight back. However, the biological weapons developed by the Umbrella in this world, the Tyrant is only a prototype product, that's all. These monsters were no match for the Tyrant at all. Under the powerful offensive of the troops led by Ophelia, the Spencer family and the Black Watch troops in Raccoon City retreated steadily. In order to support Ophelia's operation, the Foundation not only provided 126 inches 167 tyrants, but also supported Ophelia with a synthesis brigade-sized weaponry and 24 FA-181 all airspace fighters and 12 variants of EA-181 electronic fighters. Although the support is huge, everything is worth it, even if it is just to obtain the umbrella company controlled by the chaos separatists, it is worth the foundation to invest so much support to Ophelia. After Ophelia, who had been missing for many days, returned, the chaotic umbrella troops in the city, such as special forces built with a lot of money like the USS, and standing troops like the UBCS all unequivocally stood on Ophelia's side. Especially after reversing the offensive of the Spencer family, the job acceptance went even smoother. Because Ophelia, with the joint help of Shifeng and 2B, seized the control of the two mainframes of the Raccoon City umbrella, the Red Queen and the White Queen, long before the offensive was launched. After seizing control of the Red-White Queen, Ophelia knew everything about Raccoon City, the place she was familiar with. In addition, in recent years, the internal struggle of the Umbrella has been extremely fierce, and many real power factions of the Chaos Separatists are very dissatisfied with the bad old man Spencer. You are clearly a member of the Chaos Separatists, but you rely on Black Watch, foreign organizations like the Twelve Round Table Council to come back to seize power. When Ophelia was not there, these people had already dared not speak out. Even if they obediently handed over the rights to the cronies of the Spencer family, they were still full of resentment in private. Or he was obeying the orders of Spencer, a bad old man. After Ophelia announced her return, the situation was good for a while, and the forces of the Chaos Separatists were almost all on Ophelia's side. In just eight hours, Raccoon City was already in chaos, but the precarious situation immediately stabilized. The troops of the Spencer family and Black Watch were either surrounded and annihilated by the Umbrella forces in Ophelia United City, or they broke up and fled outside the city. As for the zombies in the city, they are not enough to look at in front of chaos splitters who are proficient in using biochemical weapons. In order to deal with all kinds of mutated creatures, the Umbrella Company has long been prepared. The weapons of Ophelia's troops are almost all specially made antivirus bullets. Coupled with the cooperation of 126 tyrants, the strength shown is undoubtedly crushing. If it wasn't for Ophelia's rejection of her subordinate's proposal to use weapons of mass destruction in order to return to the large resources of the Umbrella Company in the city, the efficiency would be even faster. The confident Oswell E. Spencer at the moment heard all kinds of bad news in the castle. And the high-level Umbrella of the Spencer faction was almost in chaos in the castle. At this time, a large number of USS troops loyal to Ophelia came to the outskirts of the castle on six UH-60 Black Hawk helicopters under the cover of two AH-99 gunship helicopters. Six AGM air-to-surface missiles blasted the castle's air defense facilities into pieces on the spot, and then launched fire suppression. The USS Special Forces members on the six Black Hawks immediately landed on the castle wall, suppressed the commanding heights, and wiped out all enemies. Ophelia jumped down from the cabin lightly, and looked at the ancient castle that had been captured in front of her, a triumphant smile appeared on her charming face. I am back again. Leah on the side also followed Ophelia in high spirits. Behind them, a group of chaos splitter guards slowly crossed the battlefield full of flames, corpses and blood. At the moment, the outside of the castle had been clean. When Ophelia passed through the outside of the castle and entered Midgard, she saw Sergei, an officer loyal to Spencer. This person is a perfect fit for the T-Virus, and he is also a former officer of the Ursa's Alliance. Relying on him as a material, the Umbrella Company produced the first generation of Trial Tyrants. The two Trial Tyrants standing next to Sergei are not only a bit shorter than the Tyrants that Ophelia placed, but also exposed their weak heart. Lady Ophelia, do you understand what you are doing? You will bring destruction to the chaos insurgents. 
Facing Sergei's angry reprimand, Ophelia sneered dismissively, Hey, the Spencer family doesn't belong to the Chaos Splitters alone. I just came to take back my things. I don't want to get rough with you, Mrs. Ophelia, since that's the case, let me show you my strength. As soon as the words fell, Sergei's body began to prepare for the alienation and mutation of the T-virus, but at this moment, several gunshots were fired. The large caliber anti-materiel sniper rifle directly hit the boastful Sergei, splitting him in two, and the exposed hearts of the two trial tyrants were also pierced by the anti-materiel sniper rifle. Then the soldiers accompanying Ophelia immediately fired at them with E-11SR assault rifles. Hundreds of rounds of T-virus suppression bullets sifted Sergei and the two trial tyrants aside. Tisk, what's the point of this little strength? Ophelia walked gracefully through the corpses of Sergei and the two tyrants with a look of disgust. The blasting team immediately stepped forward and blasted open the gate of the castle, and then two assault teams immediately broke into the inside of the castle. After about five minutes, the voice came from the radio, all enemies in the area security have been cleared. Ophelia walked into the castle, and the gunshots were still ringing. Those chaos separatists who were on the wrong team, as well as those high-level Spencer family members, as well as the stubborn personal guards of the Spencer family family were wiped out one after another. Gunshots and screams could be heard constantly, but the resistance inside the castle was useless. Facing the fierce offensive of the elite troops led by Ophelia and the USS troops who have fully surrendered to Ophelia, these resistances can't even splash a single splash. Ophelia finally came to the final area, where only Oswell Spencer and his loyal and rich remained. After seeing Ophelia's arrival, Spencer lying in the wheelchair had a gloomy and terrifying expression, but he still stared at Ophelia, and said in a deep voice, The umbrella is yours, Ophelia lady. Winners and losers, but I hope you can let me, the younger generation of the family. Ophelia looked at Spencer who was begging for mercy indifferently, and said lightly, if it's me who loses, will you let my people go? From the moment you make your choice, Spencer, you've already lost. Ophelia threw the glove on the ground indifferently, a burst of fire flashed in the room, and the last founder of Umbrella Company was wiped out. Leah next to 4.3 stepped forward and whispered in her ear, Madam, the troops have already started to take back the company's assets. We found this list, and this is the information on the cooperation between the Spencer family and Blackwatch. Leave it alone, I'll watch it later. At this time, Ophelia, who was in full control of the power, laughed happily, maybe I should call my dear commander later. In Taishao, Chen Feng suddenly received a notification from the system. The side mission has been completed, assist Ophelia to regain control of the Chaos Splitter. Get 100,000 rumor points, get a special item upgrade card. It seems that Ophelia's side is going well, and the umbrella is here. When he saw the rewards from the system, Chen Feng's face became even more joyful. He casually touched the military post hanging around his neck, revealing a mysterious smile. Isn't it a decedent legion? I really want to see it. North American Special Operations Command, Satellite Link. Elaine Sheffield. Major General Sheffield here, calling Task Force 141. This is Price, the team is on standby. One day ago, our intelligence personnel discovered that the target appeared in the slums of Rio City in Barrett, South America. I need you to catch the target mission as much as possible, if you can't catch it, execute it on the spot. 141 received the arrest operation will start in 12 hours. On the 26th, the third day of the nationwide blockade. Compared with the White Eagle Federation, which is in a blockade and is incomparably bleak, the Barrett West country still maintains its former prosperity. Rio, known as the city where heaven and hell coexist, is the capital of Ballot Sea, but it is also a famous crime capital. Especially in his terrifying so-called largest slum in America, there are countless criminals. Even though Balotsi set up a special operation force and carried out several war-like cleanup operations, he could not put an end to gangs, traffickers, and arms dealers. To put it bluntly, there are more black gun shops in the slums of Rio than McDonald's, and the number of private guns is even more difficult to count. Even water, electricity and even community order in the slums are controlled by gangs. Each gang has a large number of thugs and militiamen in captivity. This is a place with no order at all. 
even those so-called elite troops would rather face the most ferocious terrorists than enter here with light weapons. The entire Rio slum is like a powder keg, and the sun is about to explode. However, this chaotic and extremely dangerous place is indeed the best hiding place for some people. One hour before the action begins, John McTavish, codenamed Soap, silently looked at the photo of a bearded man in a suit with a 09 bald head in his hand. Obadiah Stanislav, a shareholder of Stark Industries, went missing after attacking Stark Industries CEO Tony. Stark before the Division Day. Obadiah seized Tony. Stark's small electric arc reactor and the information of the Mark I steel armor during the attack. We do not suspect that he is in collusion with the Council of the Twelve Round Tables who secretly funded Atala's armed forces. And he is very likely involved in planning Black Friday and is one of the culprits that led to the blockade across the country. The target has a large number of Stark industry secrets, and once the information is leaked, it will cause an immeasurable threat. We want to capture the target alive as much as possible, and if we can't capture it, we need to kill the target as much as possible. Soap McTavish put down the photo and glanced at the fat driver beside him. At the moment, a Chevrolet car in front of the 141 task force was gradually slowing down and stopped. Soap turned on the radio channel, the lava team has entered the combat position and is waiting for the signal of action. Fatty, the driver next to him. Wait, what's going on with these militiamen? Price, be alert. Soap frowned and looked at the car in front who was suddenly stopped for questioning. Something seemed wrong. Although there are militiamen wandering around with AKs everywhere on the streets of Rio, the equipment of these guys seems to be much better than those militiamen wandering around. Moreover, several militiamen who came forward to interrogate were wearing hoods. However, before Soap had time to speak, Two interrogating militiamen suddenly took out their guns and shot at the vehicle in front. None of the four task force members sitting in the vehicle in front were wearing heavy armor, and they were attacked at such close range. Soon, he was shot and killed with hatred, and died. Soap subconsciously lowered his head, but the driver beside him, Fatty, was a step slower. He was hit by the bullet that pierced the car window, and his bloody face was pressed against the steering wheel. Shet, we're under attack. Fire. Straight on. As soon as the live sound fell, Soap pushed open the car door, then picked up the dagger submachine gun in his hand, and shot and killed the armed militiamen who attacked with two short shots. A gun battle broke out on the street, and it became extremely chaotic in an instant. The civilians who were subconsciously running to avoid, and the crowd who were hit by stray bullets fell to the ground. At this time, the members of the 141st Task Force, wearing PMC Urban Warfare casual clothes, tactical vests, and inserted bulletproof plates, opened fire on the armed militias on the street. It didn't take long for the civilian slums, which were still extremely lively, to be gone without a single commoner, and corpses lay one after another in disorder on the street. With the sound of gunshots and bullets, Task Force 141 and the Rio Gang Militia fought together. However, the situation soon turned one-sided. The gang militias in Rio are all militias after all. Even though they are funded by the 12 Round Table Council and are equipped with better equipment, most of the militias are almost without bidding. Only a part of the elite is equipped with body armor, and there are very few fully armed soldiers with full body armor and protective gear. On the other side is the 141 task force selected by the entire allied elite. Although these people are not many in number, Almost everyone has good marksmanship, and is well equipped and well trained. After being attacked by armed militias in Rio at the beginning, and after suffering a dark loss, they immediately reversed the situation and fought against those militias one-sidedly. Even though those Rio armed militias relied on familiar terrain and took advantage of the complex environment of the slums to resist steadily, but these people were gang armed militias after all. At most, they have combat experience in wars between gangs or fighting with D. In terms of technical and tactical level, it must be far inferior to the members of Task Force 141. Therefore, although these Rio militiamen resisted layer by layer and tried to delay the attack of Task Force 141 by using various terrains, they were all ineffective. Only when Task Force 141 attacked a firing terrain, the opponent even began to use heavy machine guns to suppress Task Force 141. 
Due to the special nature of the operation, Task Force 141 hardly brought any heavy equipment. But at this time, Lt. Simon Riley, ghost holding an M14 ERB precision rifle, looked for a favorable shooting point, aimed at the heavy machine gun of the suppression task force, and shot to the head with one shot. However, after the firepower stopped, another machine gunner came over not long after, and was shot in the head again. After shooting two machine gun shooters in a row, Shan Yu's Kongla had to give up the idea of continuing to use heavy machine guns to suppress. As time passed, the 141st Task Force couldn't take care of too much due to the fear of the target Obadiah's escape. Coupled with the complicated environment, they also began to use some grenade launchers, weapons and other equipment, and threw grenades at the firepower of the assembled Rio armed militia. Under normal circumstances, those Rio armed militias should have retreated long ago, but at this time they are still stubbornly resisting. Until this time, Soap suddenly received a radio from Captain Price, hurry up. Obadiah is on the run. As soon as the words fell, some members of the Brava team of Task Force 141 saw Obadiah in a suit and running away under the cover of a bunch of militiamen. Quick, quick, intercept the target. He is moving towards the city. Received, Team Charlie is flanking. Seeing that Soap was getting closer and closer to Obadiah, he was about to catch up with Obadiah after killing seven or eight armed militiamen blocking the way. Soap had already seen Obadiah's flustered eyes, and at this moment, an armed militiaman suddenly swooped over from the corner, blocking Soap's pursuit. Xiao Qiang Saunders, a comrade in arms at the side, shot and killed the armed militiaman who was flying over the Soap with two shots, and helped up the team leader who fell to the ground. Leave me alone, capture the target. At the moment, Obadiah, who was running wildly, felt that his lungs were about to explode. He who was pampered and pampered had never escaped in such a mess. But thinking of the sad fate he would face if he was caught, he had no choice but to brace himself, enduring his lungs that were about to explode, and ran panting. Seeing that the pursuers were getting closer, Obadiah was anxious like an ant on a hot pot. Just as Obadiah was panting for breath and wanted to jump from the roof platform to the opposite bungalow roof. A figure threw him down. Target acquired. Repeat, target acquired. While handcuffing Obadiah, Price reported the situation by radio. Elaine Sheffield, who was watching this scene through the drone, finally breathed a sigh of relief. Elaine rubbed her somewhat stiff face, looking at the picture of the completed arrest operation, since she got the authorization from Chen Feng. She began to track down Obadiah through the information from the Foundation. Obadiah took away all the information on the Mark I steel battle suit designed by Tony, as well as a miniature arc reactor. In addition, Obadiah's identity is unusual, he has a lot of White Eagle Federation secrets, and he is also a director of the Stark Industrial Group. Therefore, this operation can only be carried out in secret and cannot be made public. Before there is no conclusive evidence, they cannot directly kill Obadiah publicly. At this time, Task Force 141 must be used. Fortunately, Task Force 141's debut was very good. Although there were some casualties, they also firmly completed the task and captured Obadiah. Next, as long as Obadiah is captured at the base, he can be interrogated secretly, and all the information he knows can be interrogated. It's just that Elaine has not had time to be happy for a long time. She has already completed the arrest and is escorting Obadiah to fly to the federal territory in a UH-60 Black Hawk helicopter. A huge object with a humanoid appearance and a high-speed flight is rapidly approaching here. Helicopter flight officer Nikolai suddenly saw the abnormality scanned on the radar, his face froze, and he hurriedly said, there is an abnormal situation. Could it be a missile? Prepare to start launching heat decoys for evasive action. Be careful, missiles are coming. As soon as the words fell, the team members on the plane did not see the missile attacking, but, a humanoid object. Only a muffled sound was heard, and there seemed to be something lying on the fuselage of the U-60 helicopter, and the speed of the helicopter dropped instantly. WTF. What kind of monster is this? Under the shocked eyes of 437 Price and Soap, the cabin door suddenly shifted, and then the helicopter's cabin door was opened abruptly. I saw a Mark I iron armor that seemed to be one size bigger on the hatch of the helicopter. When Obadiah saw this steel armor, he was ecstatic. Get me out quickly. 
Iron Overlord. As soon as the words fell, the Iron Overlord released the restraints on Obadiah's body, held him against him, and began to fly backwards. All this happened in an instant, but at this moment, the members of Task Force 141 in the cabin immediately raised their weapons, aimed at Obadiah, and pulled the trigger to shoot. Although Iron Overlord rescued Obadiah, but at this time Obadiah's overweight body did not get much protection. After being dragged out of the cabin by the Iron Overlord, although Obadiah's steel armor Iron Overlord has blocked many bullets. But Obadiah was still hit by seven or eight bullets and let out a scream. Seeing that Obadiah was injured, Iron Overlord did not continue to attack the UH-60 Black Hawk helicopter in front of him, and immediately flew in one direction at high speed. Members of Task Force 141 looked at the shape-shifting UH-60 Black Hawk helicopter and the empty seat where Obadiah was sitting, and looked at each other. Sir, we were attacked by what appears to be Iron Man, and Obadiah was taken away, but before we managed to shoot him, Obadiah may not survive. Elaine stared at the fast-moving Iron Overlord on the screen with a cold face, and slammed her slender right hand on the table hard. This fool. But at this time, the situation of Obadiah, who has at least eight holes in his body, is not optimistic, and under the high-speed movement of the Iron King, when Obadiah came to a safe place. By the time it landed, he was already dying. Obadiah tremblingly took out a bottle of injection from his pocket, seeing that the injection was not crushed by the bullet, Obadiah's pale face due to blood loss showed a trace of an expression of relief. In this case, it can only be used in advance. Obadiah murmured to himself, then took the injection and stabbed him in the heart, and then Obadiah laid down the whole body in the Iron Overlord armor. Obadiah's body seems to be mutating at an incredible speed and merged with the Iron King's armor. At the moment Chen Feng didn't know that there was an omission in the planned operation to capture Obadiah. But that was just an idle move, Chen Feng originally planned to ask Obadiah for information, and let him play the remaining value of Obadiah. Let Iron Overlord sharpen Tony Stark and make him grow up as soon as possible. It has always been a part of the plan to make the Avengers Alliance available to the Foundation and become a shield in its own right, attracting the attention of gods from all walks of life in the future. Rather, if Chen Feng knew that Obadiah's Iron Overlord armor, with the help of the 12-round table council, used the 008 substrain virus to mutate and become a special infected body, Chen Feng would only be happier. Once this special containment is contained, it will receive more special rewards. Pigs have to be fattened before being killed. At the moment, Agents Natasha Romanoff and Agent Sky, as well as SHIELD's anomaly handling team and a team of MTF agents, a total of more than 100 people disappeared in the abandoned treatment plant area. An Owl-Eye drone overlooks the area from the sky. Although it has been out of contact for about six hours, traces of intense firefights can be vaguely seen here. There were many corpses of the Black Watch troops lying here and there on the ground, as well as the corpses of many zombies and mutant creatures. A lot of zombies wandering here and there probably came from the vicinity of the infected area. A precision shooter is in place. The fire team is ready. Sir, the MTF is ready. The voices of the team members came from the earphones. At the moment Chen Feng was concentrating on using his mental power to perceive the creatures in the nearby area. The psychic commander can use psychic power to detect enemy and friendly units near the perception area. By transforming the Owl Eye Commander specific UAV equipped with a psychic amplifier, Chen Feng's perception range can reach a radius of 5 kilometers. After the reconnaissance, Chen Feng didn't even find Agent Natasha Romanoff, Agent Sky, and the MTF team, and he didn't even find the bodies of his own people. Instead, many Black Watchmen's bodies were found, all of which were killed by hot weapons. This shows that the team led by Agents Natasha Romanoff and Agent Sky planned a raid, and the raid was undoubtedly successful. They killed the Black Watch area guarding here. But what is strange is the people. Where have all the people gone? At this time, Chen Feng suddenly detected a group of unusual devices, and found some unusual corpses in this area, and these corpses seem to be researchers from Black Watch. Sir, the drone has discovered that the troops with Black Watch are approaching, do you need to block it? After hearing the news, Chen Feng exited the mental detection mode, and glanced at the Black Watch troops that appeared on the tablet. Chen Feng had such an expression as expected, 
At this time, we have discovered that there is a problem with the military investigation team, are you planning to kill him? However, he didn't panic, but calmly gave instructions to the team. Leave some people to block the Black Watch, assign an assault team, and I will lead the assault team, Gwen, and Elloweather into the target area to explore. Quote. Ever since he learned that Elloweather was the mother of 008, Chen Feng roughly knew what was going on. According to the description of the black light virus in the massacre prototype, there are only two situations for Aloeather now. Due to the black light virus, in the first situation, the real Aloeather may already be in a dead state, and the virus controls the body. The second situation is that Aloeather has completely integrated with the black light combined with the 008 mother virus, becoming a symbiosis. To put it simply, the current Aloeser is either dead and then invaded by the black light virus that is the mother of 008, possessing others' body and reborn, or she is completely symbiotic with 008 black light and becomes a symbiosis with the host similar to Venom. That's why Aloeather lost most of her memories. And her current amnesia is only temporary. As the black light virus that integrated 08's mother in her body continues to evolve and become stronger and stronger, her memory will gradually recover and become stronger and stronger until she continues to grow a queen-like existence who can control all zombie viruses. Because of this, Chen Feng did not dare to let such an existence wander around, and would not intentionally restrict her actions. In the current situation, if you want to contain 008, you must get Aloeather's favor, so that she can be contained voluntarily. If Aloeather is allowed to go her own way, Chen Feng is worried that she will go down the path of killing Brother A, the protagonist in the original. Because the black light virus can easily absorb the memory and knowledge of all living things, this will cause the huge and chaotic memory to overwhelm the original consciousness if it is not channeled and controlled. In the end, either one will become a saint by becoming a saint, or one will completely blacken after seeing a large number of dark sides of human beings like Brother A in the original version, and wants to use viruses to destroy the world. Chen Feng has already vaguely speculated about the containment this time. If he wants to successfully clean up the mess that 008 spread, he must have Aloeser's goodwill at the same time, so that she can grow to the point where she can truly control the containment. The extent of 08's strength. For this reason, the two partners Aloeather is familiar with, Catherine, Gwen, and Chen Feng must bring together everything around Aloeather to be relatively familiar to her. Moreover, Aloeather and Gwen are both extraordinary combat power now, and they will not be a hindrance to the next actions. After Chen Feng, who had made up his mind to pay attention, gave the order, the MTF that had already set up an ambush soon began to fight. A mechanized force from Blackwatch is rushing to the laboratory here. Since the troops led by Natasha Romanoff and Agent Sky deployed an electronic jamming system before the attack, it took nearly five hours, and it was not until the daily shift of the guard that Blackwatch found the abnormality. Coincidentally, Chen Feng and the others came to this area just at this time. It can be seen that the Blackwatch attaches great importance to this place. After discovering that there was a problem with the secret facility here and could not be contacted with the garrison troops, they immediately dispatched a mechanized infantry to investigate. In terms of strength, it is at least a mechanized infantry company. At this time, the leading M2 Bradley chariot had already entered the intersection, before the crew could react, two flames shone from the commanding heights of the tall buildings above. Immediately afterwards, two anti-tank rockets hit the two M2 Bradley infantry vehicles at the same time. The crispy infantry vehicles were blown up on the spot and caught fire, quickly burning and exploding the ammunition inside. The two nearby troop carriers didn't even have time to react, they were affected by the explosion, the roof of the chariot flew up, crackling flames shot up into the sky, and all kinds of ammunition were flying everywhere. The infantry on the two affected troop trucks suffered heavy casualties in an instant. There is an ambush. Get out of the car and fight back. Blackwatch's battlefield commander reacted quickly, but it was useless. In the case of an ambush in an urban street battle with complex terrain and commanding heights everywhere, to put it bluntly, even if a person on a tall building throws a brick down, it might kill a soldier. In addition, it was ambushed again, and the Blackwatch troops at the crossroads were unlucky. The MTF on the two tall buildings attacked back and forth, without any dead ends. At this time, the machine gunner fired wildly to suppress the shooting, 
while the precision shooter shot those counterattack firepower points and important targets one by one. The supporting Black Watch troops suffered heavy casualties immediately, even the commander of the Black Watch hastily started to call for reinforcements. What's worse is that due to the loud gunfire, the zombies wandering around the infected area are also attracted, coupled with the violent explosion, the howling of the infected one after another, this is a sign of a wave of corpses. All of this is also part of the plan. By causing a wave of corpses, the follow-up Black Watch troops will not be able to reach their destination in time. The Black Watch troops had been completely suppressed, and suffered heavy casualties. At this time, the MTFs did not continue to attack, because the Black Watch troops, which suffered heavy casualties, found that large numbers of zombies had joined the battlefield. The gunshots and explosions from the battle just now were like the bell for dinner, and countless screaming bereaved households immediately poured into the block. The losses were heavy, and the Black Watch troops lost almost all their infantry vehicles. They had to fight the tide of corpses near the wreckage. However, their weakened firepower had no good power to stop the tide of corpses from entering. Looking at the Black Watch troops who were in a hard fight and about to be eaten by all members, Chen Feng didn't continue to watch, but said to Gwen and Aloeser beside him, let's go. Quote. As he spoke, he gestured to Ms. 2B beside him, and then the MTF team member with the hook gun immediately stepped forward and aimed at the building below and fired the zipline, and soon the zipline tied with the crossbow bolts was fixed to the building below roof tiles. Chen Feng took the lead and landed on the platform through the zipline. Spider Gwen and Aloeather are more trouble free, they use, fly, directly. After the assault team followed Chen Feng down to the ceiling, the assault team led by Chen Feng soon killed the scattered zombies wandering nearby. Under the advanced silencer of the MTF E11 rifle, even in close combat, the sound it makes is almost the same as in the movie, and it has almost entered the target building without causing any big movements. The further you go in, the more corpses are strewn about on the ground, all of them are Black Watch soldiers who were attacked and killed by sneak attacks. Finally, the assault team led by Chen Feng came to the core area of the abandoned treatment plant, which is completely an advanced laboratory. In front of everyone, a suspicious sci-fi mechanical device was still running slowly. Miss 2B at the moment has completely analyzed the instrument in front of her, raised her head and said to Chen Feng. Commander, all the electronic parameters have been deciphered. According to the information, this seems to be some kind of transmitter, which is in a state of charging. Teleporter. Looking at the device in front of him, Chen Feng seemed to think of something, and said to the MTF at the side, Soldier, go and put the energy object suspected of element 115 over there on the charger of this device. Yes, sir. Chen Feng watched as the MTF stepped aside under his instructions and picked up the substance that shone with blue light. According to Ms. 2B's analysis, this should be an object called Element 115, which is a mysterious substance brought by a meteorite falling to the Blue Star during World War II. And this substance was also the culprit that caused the red-handed MTF task force to be sent to this world. Element 115 has an extremely high value. The energy contained in each gram of element 115 is equivalent to 10 tons of helium-3, and the substance of helium-3 only has half a ton on the blue star. Only when the Earth-Moon route is opened and mining can be carried out from the moon's surface can we have a steady stream of helium-3. It is conceivable that just this piece of element 115 in front of it is already invaluable, and it can make the two superpowers 683 start a war for this. Miss 2B, continue to check the records on the computer to see if there is information such as coordinates. Quote. At this time, Ms. 2B, who had checked the computer records of the teleporter, said with a relaxed expression, Commander, the coordinates have been found. Just six hours ago, the teleporter teleported to a default coordinate location. You need to start teleportation, device. Chen Feng hesitated for a moment, then nodded, open it. Okay commander, I'll just get it to work. Under Miss 2B's control, the teleporter soon started working again. At this time, a blue wormhole-like spherical energy suddenly formed on the strange metal device in the center of the transmitter. In an instant, a huge amount of suction came. Commander, the teleportation has begun. Hearing this, Chen Feng gave up resisting, and was directly sucked into the wormhole opened by element 115. 
The next second, when Chen Feng opened his eyes again, he appeared in a hall. Save ammo, keep firing. Here they come again. Detective Sky's shout came from next to his ears, and then the ground began to shake and the gravel buried the passage. This is the last time, if you use ability again, this place will definitely collapse, we must fight out. Chen Feng opened his eyes, and saw that he was in a huge amounts of underground cave, and this huge amounts of underground cave extended in all directions, with several passages. Looks like some huge dig site from the 50s, full of old electronics and digging facilities. And in this huge amounts of underground mine, a group of people are fighting fiercely. It's the missing agents Sky and Natasha Romanoff, and the shield agents and MTF. At this time, Chen Feng saw a large number of zombies running faster than Bolt, with eyes as bright as 40 watt light bulbs. Zombies. Almost without exception, these zombies are all wearing military uniforms from the 1940s to 1950s. Agent Sky, Agent Natasha Romanoff. What's going on here? Hearing Chen Feng's voice, the widow sister who was in the middle of the fierce battle looked back and saw Chen Feng and the assault team led by him who had just been teleported. Your Excellency Chen Feng, didn't expect you to find this place. That's great. It's a long story, you may be a little unbelievable, but this is no longer the blue star, we are on the moon. Chen Feng raised his eyebrows and pretended to be surprised. What? We are actually on the AJCA moon. Is it caused by that weird facility like a teleporter? That's right, Commander, but there are a large number of infected creatures here. This base has been completely fallen, and these monsters came out of nowhere. They are endless, and they can't be killed at all. A new batch will come. Chen Feng looked at the tide of corpses and the team's increasingly weak firepower, and smiled slightly. Ammo. There's plenty of it here. As Chen Feng's voice fell, under the surprised eyes of Sky and Natasha Romanoff, a batch of ammunition boxes appeared out of nowhere in the open space. This is the function after the service gun was upgraded. It was an upgrade reward obtained after the 939 was contained. After the service gun was upgraded, the service gun now has a portable space of 5 cubic meters. In addition to not being able to store living things, it is a good choice to stuff it with ammunition. Therefore, Chen Feng had already placed a large amount of supplies in the 5 cubic meter space, and this time was just right. Replenish ammunition and supplies, supply in order, revive the battle formation, assault group, join the battle. Miss 2B, Miss Aloesser and Gwen, please open the way ahead. As soon as the words fell, Miss 2B quickly jumped a few times, and then drew her sword to start a battle like Wushuang mowing grass. At the same time, the three drones accompanying her kept pouring ammunition at the large number of zombies at the intersection. And Aloesser didn't give up much, her hands turned into double blades, entering the tide of corpses was like a tiger entering a pack of wolves. Spider Gwen is a little weaker, she doesn't have the powerful attack methods of Aloether and Miss 2B, but she has experienced spider strengthening after all. And after getting along with Aloesser and Catherine for many days, the two taught her a lot of fighting skills. So Gwen beat these zombies just like playing games, basically one punch or one sweep can overturn a large group of zombies. After these three super units entered the field, Sky and Widow Sister, who had been fighting fiercely for a long time, couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief. Those shield agents and MTF task force members can also come up to replenish various supplies. After the supplies were supplied one after another, Chen Feng led the team, with Aloesser, Miss 2B, Spider Gwen, Sky and Widow's sister as sharp knives, and quickly rushed to the moon base through the passage, Core Zone. Miss 2B, Aloesser, Gwen, Widow, and Sky turned into a forward team, like three sharp knives. They directly smashed through the endless tide of zombies. Under the strong opening of the three extraordinary striker teams, the MTF Mobile Task Force members and SHIELD's agent team cleaned all the way along the way, and were able to exert a strong firepower advantage. Although the tide of corpses here is huge, under such a powerful offensive, the team has maintained an unhurried speed, like a steamroller steadily crushing the tide of corpses. As the commander, Chen Feng didn't take much action, but released the psychic motivation and psychic shield support to the vanguard group composed of five ladies, and used the psychic power to detect ability to guide them to the right path. Chen Feng carefully observed the various zombies who were killed along the way, 
but the more he observed, the more Chen Feng felt something was wrong. This moon base is very wrong. It stands to reason that it is impossible for a moon base to have such a large number of corpses. Even judging from this underground excavation site and some scattered documents and logs picked up, the scale of this lunar base can accommodate more than 1,000 people. But in the zombie wave of this scale, there are at least thousands of zombies just killed by the team, and they are still appearing constantly. And those zombies were also very strange, he even saw a lot of zombies in black watch costumes, and zombies in the shape of the German three Wehrmacht during World War II. There are even 60s style zombies of White Eagle Federal and Soviet soldiers. More of them were civilians wearing clothes in the style of the 1950s and 1960s. The annual span of these zombie costumes is very exaggerated, all of which show that this lunar laboratory is extraordinary. Sure enough, when Chen Feng discovered these abnormalities, a system prompt appeared. Investigate the abnormal lunar base. This lunar base has an abnormal number of zombies from abnormal sources. Please investigate what is wrong with the lunar base of the 935 team. It seems that the system also judged that there was an abnormality here, and also triggered the extension of the branch line. Keep the formation, continue to attack and suppress them, be careful not to use heavy firepower, damage the base, we are on the moon. Chen Feng calmly continued to direct the team's operations. As they got closer to the surface facilities, Chen Feng also issued an order not to use heavy firepower. After all, this is on the moon. Once the old base facilities are destroyed, everyone will be exposed to the intense radiation in outer space, or there will be problems with the airtight cabin, and the air will leak. Will have fatal consequences. This also caused the cleaning speed to be slightly slowed down without using heavy firepower. However, under the command of Chen Feng, the team still maintained an offensive formation, advancing methodically and slowly. Assault rifles, light machine guns, and submachine guns formed flames to wipe out the dense zombies. The commando team of MTF is like a compact killing machine, with perfect coordination, well-trained, precise marksmanship, and extremely stable and slowly retreating the tide of corpses. The only problem is that the consumption of ammunition is very large. Fortunately, the storage space of the agent duty gun can store a lot of ammunition, and it can continue to maintain such consumption. But if the tide of corpses continues like this, no amount of ammunition will be exhausted. But fortunately, when the team was advancing, they also found a lot of supplies left by the Black Watch, as well as the bodies of the Black Watch soldiers who shot themselves. By picking up corpses and using Black Watch's weapons, the problem of ammunition reduction is also alleviated. At this time, the team came to an area extending in all directions, and the number of corpses increased sharply. At this moment, Chen Feng quickly found a correct passage, and directed the team to pass quickly. Miss 2B, Aloesser, Gwen, Detective Natasha Romanoff, and Detective Sky, please come to the rear, hold here, and we will open the passage. No problem, leave it to me, Commander. Commander, go and open the passage, we guarantee that these zombies will not break through the line of defense. After hearing the affirmative answer, Chen Feng turned his head and told the sergeant major at the side, Sergeant Major, lead the commando and follow me. Yes, sir. Chen Feng led the task force quickly through the metal passage, and soon an old-fashioned metal isolation door weighing at least dozens of tons appeared in front of everyone. The combat sergeant waved his hand, and the electronic warfare experts of the commando team stepped forward immediately, and cracked the door after a while. As the door was unlocked, the dust-filled metal door slowly opened. Everyone's field of vision suddenly opened up, a hall in the style of the 1950s and 1960s, all made of metal, appeared in front of everyone, and zombies in white coats appeared sporadically in the hall. These researcher zombies staggered and turned around, let out a roar. Bang, bang, two gunshots broke the tranquility, followed by dense gunfire. Chen Feng turned on the radio, Miss 2B, Agent Natasha Romanoff. You can follow up, we have come to the surface hall of the lunar base. Assault team, clean up the building and establish a safe zone. As you order, commander. Check the ammunition, form six assault teams, and follow me to clean the base. Soon, six assault teams, each consisting of 12 CQB melee teams armed with assault rifles and submachine guns, were organized and began to clean the surface facilities of the lunar base. 
It didn't take long for Chen Feng to see Miss 2B, Natasha Romanoff, Sky, Gwen, Aloweather, and a mixed MTF team composed of S.H.I.E.L.D. agents. The team in the rear quickly passed the gate, and then the indicator light on the gate was lit, and with a few gunshots, the gate was closed, and the sound of the corpse tied outside the gate was completely blocked. It seems that after arriving at the surface facilities, the tide of corpses suddenly decreased. The zombies here are all white coats wearing the uniforms of researchers in the 1960s and zombie soldiers in old-fashioned military uniforms. In about an hour or so, all the zombies in the surface facilities of the Kimian base were wiped out. Commander, all the information has been sorted out. In the reference room of the base, Ms. 2B has quickly invaded and cracked those hosts, and sorted out all the documents and materials inside. Chen Feng nodded, pulled out his chair and sat in front of an old-fashioned desk, opened the military notebook on the desk, and looked carefully. Not surprisingly, this base was created by the 935 team. It can be seen from the 935 team log that can be seen everywhere in the base. The logo of the 935 group holds the nucleus of an atom with a hand, and the number, 935, is in the nucleus. Through the collation of Ms. 2B's information, Chen Feng also roughly understood what kind of existence the 935 group is. The 935 group was established before the outbreak of World War II. It was originally an organization composed of scientists from various countries, and it was used by the Prussian Third Reich after the outbreak of World War II. After the end of World War II, the Prussian Third Reich was defeated, and the 935 group split up and took refuge in the new Soviet Union and the White Eagle Federation. The main research direction of the 935 group was a special substance that appeared in the territory of the Prussian Third Reich at that time, those substances were named 115 elements. According to the description of Dr. Ludwig Mathis, the leader of the 935 group, element 115 is very powerful. Element 115 can revive dead cells, change time and space, and act as a miraculous weapon of energy, which has great research value. Element 115 did not exist on the blue star at all, but was brought by meteorites from outside the sky. Even the 935 team only extracted 100 grams of element 115. Through the 115 elements, the 935 team created a hyperspace transmission device, and built this lunar base on the moon for research. In the late World War II, the 935 team defected to the Third Reich, and cooperated with Red Skull, the leader of Hydra, to study lethal weapons together in order to restore the defeat of the German Empire. At this time, during a teleportation experiment of the 935 team, they discovered a world. During the exploration of that world, the 935 team found that it was a parallel world of Blue Star, but that parallel world had been completely destroyed by the source of infection. People in the whole world have turned into unconscious zombies, destroying the existence of that world. On that world, 935's advanced team encountered a group of armed men calling themselves the Foundation's Mobile Task Force. That group of people obviously came from another world, with a level of technology far beyond theirs, and for some reason were also trapped in that world. Then the 935 team put forward a proposal to help the Foundation Task Force get out of trouble. After the two parties reached a brief cooperation, the 935 team learned the truth about the destruction of that world. An existence called Anomaly Containment 008 completely destroyed a world. In the Anomalous Containment 008, it was the teleportation caused by element 115, was brought to that world, causing a world to be destroyed. After that, team 935 and a part of Hydra, who had seen the horrors of the containment, and several renegade Red Right Task Force members formed the Chaos Insurgency. Begin to study the power of this taboo. The Chaos Separatists are also divided into the branch that studies the 115 element and the branch that studies the 008 mutant strain of the abnormal containment due to the different research directions. Naturally, this lunar base was specially established for the study of element 115, as well as the study of the living dead man core for that biochemical doomsday world. Through the structure of the base, Chen Feng finally knew why there were so many zombies in the underground facility. It turned out that there was a large experimental teleportation device in the underground facility. That large teleportation device has gone out of control, 
linking to that biochemical world and constantly teleporting the living dead man to this world. At the moment, Tasha and C, who were also looking at the documents outside, were numb. The two stared at each other dumbfounded, feeling that this base was established for the research of element 115 and abnormal containment. And the real face of the Dead Man Legion is actually linked to a doomsday world with 115 elements. All of this turned out to be that the abnormal containment 008 went out of control, leading to the destruction of a world. At this moment, the two became more and more awed and horrified at the concept of abnormal containment. One containment completely destroys a world, if the Legion of Living Dead Man is brought to this world's earth. Thinking of this, the expressions of the two of them changed. They immediately realized the horror of this weapon, because the teleportation of the 115 elements is almost without any rules, and it is teleported directly using the anchor points of different worlds. In other words, once someone or an organization uses this device, once it is activated, some cities on Blue Star may be swallowed up by countless zombies in an instant. Thinking of the sudden appearance of a large number of zombies and infected creatures in the city without warning, it is impossible for any city to withstand such a catastrophe. With such a weapon it is even possible to destroy a country in an instant. This must be prevented from happening. Okay, boys, it's time to take back our city. Our mission is to cooperate with the Strategic Homeland Defense Attack and Logistics Agency, ER, that is, SHIELD to counterattack New York. We will take back the city from those thugs and mutant creatures. The Red 1st Division, the 1st Marine Division, and the Rangers and our 101st Airborne Division will clear New York City today. I believe that the flag of the Commonwealth will fly over Liberty Island again soon. After waiting for the landing area to be cleared, we will establish a landing area on Liberty Island as a bridgehead. After the FOB is completed, we will move towards the urban area. Ready to kick those ass. Hoo-ha. In the cabin, the Ma runs of the Federal Marine Corps in the helicopter raised their M16 rifles and cheered. This is a relatively large helicopter formation consisting of 24 Black Hawks and 6 CH-47 Chinook transport helicopters. At the moment, these Federal soldiers were taking the 663 plane and flying over Liberty Island. The soldiers looked at the Statue of Liberty parallel to themselves and couldn't help being in a daze for a while. The non-commissioned officers and officers in the cockpit were still speaking to the soldiers to boost morale, when suddenly the alarm sounded in the cockpit. There was a violent shaking in the cabin, and then the CH-47 Chinook circled uncontrollably, and the two soldiers sitting in the tail cabin were unlucky and directly flew out of the hospital by the airflow circle. What happened? Hell, we're under attack, watch out, surface-to-air missiles. In a Black Hawk helicopter, the flight crew tried hard to maneuver and released heat induction, trying to avoid the incoming missiles. Several high explosive bombs hit the bulletproof glass of the cockpit. The fragments directly scratched his helmet. The flight crew screamed and covered his eyes, the co-pilot at the side checked his state in a panic, and didn't notice the CH-47 Chinook that was out of control and crashed ahead. The two out-of-control planes collided. Mayday. Mayday. This is Air Formation 21, we were attacked by unknown, Super 64 and Super 61 crashed, what is this? In the chaotic radio, the soldiers sitting in the Black Hawk helicopter saw several unidentified flight objects with tail flames approaching the fighter plane quickly. The flight attendant, who was calling by radio, was stunned to see an Iron Man wearing an Iron Man armor flying in front of him. As soon as he raised his hand, the Gatling mounted on the mechanical arm burst out with intensive firepower. Even the bulletproof glass in front of the cockpit could not resist such powerful firepower and was instantly penetrated. Amidst the terrified calls of the soldiers of the 21st Air Formation, such Iron Men appeared one after another. Hell, we, were being attacked by Iron Men from Stark Industries. There are too many of them. Accompanied by exclamations and screams on the radio, as well as one crashed helicopter after another, in the Federal Army base behind, a group of high-ranking generals of the Federal Army watched in despair as their team suffered a one-sided battle, massacre. Soon, calls were made to S.H.I.E.L.D., to Stark Industries. In the Foundation's Paradise Island base, Tony Stark, who has recovered from his injuries, is enjoying a rare sunbath with Pepper by the beach on the island. While Tony was drinking a martini beside him, several uninvited guests came over led by a Foundation officer. 
Mr. Stark, this is Phil Coulson agent from S.H.I.E.L.D. He said he has an urgent matter for you. Tony has not been idle recently, but has helped the Foundation develop a lot of new projects, so he has gotten acquainted with most of the liaison officers at the Foundation's Paradise Island base. Phil Coulson knew the location of the Foundation's Paradise Island base. Finding Chen Feng was more troublesome, but if you wanted to find Tony who was relatively more relaxed, you could still find him. Tony, who was enjoying the two-person world with Pepper just now, suddenly suppressed the smile on his face, and looked helplessly at Phil Coulson who came to the door. Phil Coulson agent, what's the matter? Phil Coulson held a tablet in front of Tony with a serious expression on his face. Mr. Stark, not long ago, the Iron Man of Stark Industries attacked the federal military and S.H.I.E.L.D. agents. These few video consultations were collected with great difficulty. Tony, Stark took the tablet, clicked on the video, and watched it carefully. In the video, a group of mysterious organizations equipped with MK-1 mechas attacked the Federation helicopter group and the S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. Tony, Stark carefully looked at the Iron Men in the picture, playing and watching frame by frame. Soon Tony, Stark saw a lot of tricks, his brows were furrowed, and after a while, he let out a breath and returned the tablet to Phil Coulson. This is not done by Stark Industries, although the technology is indeed using the technology of MK1. Tony, Stark pondered for a moment, and said with a puzzled expression, although Obadiah has obtained the technology of the Mark II, but without the help of JARVIS, he cannot 100% reproduce the performance of the Mark II. These are low-profile mass-produced versions of the Mark II, but the weird thing is, they act weird. According to my careful observation, they are just similar to MK2. In fact, the airframe is quite different from MK2. Moreover, these military paints are obviously militarized and simple military ho. Hearing Tony's words, Phil Coulson's face was not calm. What? These are the stolen Mark II technologies. According to our speculation, the number of these mass-produced military mechas is at least nearly a hundred. Don't be nervous. According to the evaluation of JARVIS, the combat power of these mass-produced military mechs can only display 50% of the performance of the original Mark II. They are all poor imitations. Mr. Tony, the diffusion of Iron Man technology has caused us to suffer huge amounts of losses, and we need your help. Tony was silent for a moment, then nodded slowly. Yes, that's right, this is my responsibility, I can't continue hiding here, sorry, Pepper, I have some things that must be done. Pepper looked at Stark with concern and asked, Tony, are you okay? Tony squeezed out a smiling face. It's okay, with the help of the foundation base, I have completed the improvement of MK4, and the injury has healed. Let me go with you, I can't let Obadiah continue to do evil. It's not too late, let's set off immediately. Pepper watched with concern as Tony, Phil Coulson, Agent May and others left the Paradise Island base in a hurry. And all of this has been observed by Chiffon. In the intelligence records, the search found at least 64 attacks in various parts of the Federation all of which were military mechas manufactured using the technology of the MK2 mecha. Based on the system assessment, Shifeng has obtained data, and it is highly suspected that the attacking military mechs were funded by chaos splitters from the 12 councils. Judging that Obadiah has acted outright hostile to the federal government, Shifeng's assessment suggests that the air formation should be on standby, after receiving the 4.3 authorization from the commander, it will attack as soon as possible. The intelligence code 221 will be sent to the commander as soon as the communication is restored. As Shifeng who has taken over the host system of the foundation base, Chen Feng naturally gave her a lot of temporary decision making and management authority. The first of the usual events, Shifeng is already ready to go out, and only needs to report as soon as the commander resumes communication. And on the lunar base, Chen Feng has also cleared the surface buildings of the entire lunar base. However, because there are endless zombies underground, it is temporarily impossible to go down. Just when Chen Feng was wondering whether to return to the underground teleportation device and return to Blue Star. The completion prompt of the system branch task sounds. Complete the side mission of investigating the lunar base, get the reward, Call of Duty World Item Space Carrier Retribution. Is the Retribution Aerospace Carrier. 
Chen Feng looked at the items rewarded in the side quest, but he didn't expect it to be a real space carrier. Is it because the side mission is at the lunar base of the 935 team? The Retribution Aerospace Aircraft Carrier, from Call of Duty 13 World, is the only remaining aerospace aircraft carrier of the Blue Star Fleet in this world. This space carrier is different from the space carrier made by S.H.I.E.L.D., which relies on anti-gravity engines and technology at the time, and can only operate in the atmosphere. The Retribution is a real interstellar warship that can travel to and from various planets in the solar system, although in the world of Call of Duty 13, the technological level is still at the elementary level interstellar civilization stage. However, as one of the flagships of its fleet, the Retribution should not be underestimated in its tonnage and combat power, and its combat power is unique on the current Blue Star. Although the Retribution is not the most powerful warship in the world of Call of Duty 13, its performance can also be ranked among the top few. The space carrier Retribution has a length of 637 meters, a height of 75 meters, and a width of 212 meters. Its maximum propulsion speed has reached 220,000 kilometers per hour. It also has an FTL faster than light engine mode, which can quickly maneuver within the solar system. Armed as a mothership, Retribution can carry 20 Jackal space fighters and 4 Raven transport boats. O9 also has 80 units of missile launch units, 6 large space torpedo pods, and 8 phalanx point defense systems. The Jackal is a standard aerospace fighter. If it is divided according to the standard, it should be regarded as a 6.5 generation fighter. This fighter has two 30mm cannons and two 50mm cannons. It is also equipped with eight AGM missiles that can attack multiple kind of goal. If the performance of the Jackal is outside the atmosphere, it actually surpasses that of the Snow Wind and the Light Knight who have not undergone aerial modification. However, if it is in the atmosphere, the Jackal will be beaten by the terrible mobility of Shifeng and the Light Knight. After all, Shifeng and the Light Knight who have not been modified by the sky cannot enter the space to fight. Even so, the 20 Jackal space fighters carried by the punishment can easily seize the air supremacy of any airspace on the current Blue Star. Now, this ship will be the key to Chen Feng's team leaving the lunar base. Although in theory, the team could go back to the ground with a lot of effort, and then return to the Earth through the teleportation device, but that would be too risky. According to the logs of the 935 team, the teleportation device located underground at the lunar surface base seems to have been damaged, and the number of people who can teleport each time is limited, which is very unstable. If they go back to the ground and return to the Earth through the transmission device, the team will definitely suffer unnecessary casualties. Apparently, both Agent Natasha Romanoff and Agent Sky, who are S.H.I.E.L.D. agents, have noticed this. Not long after Chen Feng received the reward, he saw the widow walking into the reference room worriedly. Mr. Chen Feng, we have just read the information. The only way to go back and forth between the blue star and the moon is through the underground transmission device. The risk is too great. As she said that, the widow's sister seemed to have made some kind of decision, and said resolutely. The foundation was trapped in the lunar base to investigate the reason for our disappearance. Now you cannot lose your command, Mr. Chen Feng, on the Blue Star of Terra. If necessary, Sky and I hope that you can return to Terra first. Blue Star. Seeing the serious face of the widow sister and Agent Sky, who was ready to die generously at any time, a smile appeared on Chen Feng's face. Without exaggeration, Agent Natasha Romanoff and Agent Sky, it's not there yet, we have transportation. Hearing this, Natasha Romanoff and Sky's eyes widened. Sky looked at him in surprise, and said with some doubts, Sir, it's not that I question you, but we are now in a facility on the moon. You don't plan to let rockets take us back, do you? Well, to be honest, I didn't intend to continue to expose the Foundation's cards, but who made us trapped on the moon? Chen Feng shrugged, then pressed his military cap, and clapped his hands, Okay, beautiful ladies, get ready to take our transportation and enjoy this Earth-Moon flight. Seeing Chen Feng's mysterious expression, Natasha Romanoff and Sky had no choice but to follow. As soon as he left the reference room, he saw Gwen and Aloweather approaching. Gwen approached the widow and asked, Ms. Natasha Romanoff and Ms. Sky, did Commander Chen Feng tell you how to leave? 
Mr. Chen Feng said that there is an Earth Moon flight that can pick us up. Earth Moon flight, Aloweather and Gwen exclaimed. As a high school student, Gwen suddenly had a look of extreme excitement, Earth Moon flight. Is it a rocket, or some kind of spaceship? Miss 2B came over at this time and reported to Chen Fengwei. The backup space carrier sent by the Commander Foundation has arrived at the scheduled orbit. Let them dock at the docking port of the barge at the lunar base, the docking port of the barge they are docking with is too small. Leave a part of the MTF stationed here and replenish supplies. We will return to Blue Star on the mothership first. After that, this base will still be used, so that the engineering team will prepare for the transformation and expansion of this place. Okay Commander, the mothership has arrived, and is preparing for the docking work. As Chen Feng said that, he stopped in his tracks, and everyone stopped what they were doing, staring at the giant in front of them in shock. Compared with any ordinary Blue Star aircraft carrier, the ship with a height of more than 600 meters is a huge steel monster, and this ship is now slowly docking at the barge docking port directly in front of the lunar base. Compared to the stunned Natasha Romanoff, Sky, Aloesser and Gwen, who had never seen anything in the world, Chen Feng and Miss 2B seemed relatively indifferent. Ms. 2B has also seen the big world. In the world she lives in, artificial humans have created huge lunar bases. She has seen a lot of such huge mechanical creations. Although it was the first time for Chen Feng to see this ship in reality, he was too familiar with this ship in the game. Even with his eyes closed, he knew the structure of this ship 517, so he was not interested. After all, although the punishment is a huge monster with a length of more than 600 meters, in Chen Feng's eyes, it is just a small boat. Compared with the truly powerful battleships of those space civilizations, the Retribution can only be regarded as a light escort carrier class ship. Well, ladies, welcome aboard our special monthly flight, Retribution. Chen Feng looked at the mothership indifferently, introduced it with eloquence, and then took the lead through the barge interface and entered the interior of the cabin as naturally as going home. As soon as he entered the interior of the ship, Chen Feng's communication equipment immediately trembled a few times, and his communication system received several messages. Commander, welcome aboard the USS Retribution. I am the captain, Rear Admiral John Alder. The 800 crew and marines on board are happy to serve you. At the moment's widow, Sky, Aloesser, Gwen, and the shield agents who entered the city like country guns all felt like a dream. The foundation is so powerful, and it has its own space carrier, and looking at the advanced equipment on the ship, this group of children who have never seen anything in the world are like quails, obediently listening to the foundation's arrangements. There is no way, if you don't take the foundation's boat, then you won't have a boat ticket to go home. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and support my channel.